Hey everyone! Hello! Hello there and welcome to the last episode of Firebrands, the fire of life. Uh, this episode, as all the episodes in the month of September, uh, are to help give money to the St. Jude's Children's Cancer Research Foundation by way of cosplay underscore IRL. So uh, while you're here, we're going to having a link pop up in the in the chitty chitty chat chat section. Uh, if you see those links, please give whatever you can. Anything is great. And while we're here, just uh, have fun and enjoy the show. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to do some introductions to the full crew that we have today, do a little bit of recap, and then get right into the final episode of Firebrands, the fire of life. Starting with the wonderful, the amazing, the absolute champ doing this game at 5 a.m. in Germany, Fee. Hi, guys. Um, yes, I am in Germany currently, so this is like a overseas campaign now. <gasps> it fits. Oh, my God. As if I would have known. Um, hi, my name is Fee. Um, I am playing Jaeger, um, the chocolate-obsessed uh, fetchling <laughs> um, that has gotten us in a few more troubles than probably necessary. Um, if you want to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram under Finneman or on Twitter under the same name. Um, and yeah, that's all I have to say. Also, I'm drinking coffee, so if I get a little bit hyped, you're welcome. <laughs> So I'm talking about. Uh, also, uh, happy to have her for as long as we can. This is our friend, Sydney. Please, Sydney, tell them who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hello, my name is Sydney Rubino. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and so is my character's pronouns. No beard. The lovely, lovely, <laughs> the fighter who I missed so much. I missed two games. What happened? Why? Um, it was very, I'm very, it was very sad. Um, but she's lovely and I'm excited to, um, shoot some things and talk more about my wife. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing your fighter in action, which we will be at least once this episode. Next up. <laughs> is that a it, promise or it like is, a threat? It's a, um, it's a guarantee. Whether it's a threat or a promise is how you interpret that. Uh, so Ian, please tell them who you are, who you're playing and what your pronouns are. Hey everybody, my name is Ian. For this campaign, I have been playing Paddle, the Gripply Monk. Their pronouns are they, them. My pronouns are he, him. Awesome, awesome. Mr. Michael Powell, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Well, I am Michael Powell, and I play the fat. Oh, wait, wait, no, no. Oh, I play man, the Magnificent. Not, not until November. The Magnificent. Pippo, the Magnificent. And um, our pronouns are he, him, they, them. Excellent. Last and certain not least, Makai, you wonderful guest. It's been a joy to have you. Please tell us who you are, who you're playing. Who, who are your pronouns? Who are your pronouns, lovely? Uh, hi, my name is Makai. I, um, both me and Rally, my character, we both use he, they pronouns. And we are going to do it just do it do it right do it well and we're gonna get it done tonight that's the plan hell or high water final episode also i want to double check because i think i didn't ask fee for the character uh the name of the pronouns do, do we cover those anyway i want to make sure we get that out I, there probably not but my brain is small brain so i don't remember but um Yeager's pronouns are she her and for me it's literally anything you have the choice of pronouns that you want to call me cool <laughs> just refer awesome. to me please just refer to me <laughs> that's all I have to say. My, my pronouns are cool cooler uh, <laughs> cool cool yeah. coolest yeah. my pronouns are only she because I cannot be her <laughs> oh, I was hoping God. I was hoping someone was going to make that reference at some point that was so good you're welcome I did <laughs> uh, I still have a reference to make We'll get to that point. Anyway, my name is PJ. Uh, PJ McGaw. I am the GM for Edge of Legend, Natural 20 Productions, and of course, Firebrands, the fire of life. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and as a GM, I'll be playing everyone and everything in between. Uh, without further ado, here's a quick recap of what you missed episode three. If you didn't see Ian do a kick-ass job of it, you can go check our YouTube, uh, Nat20Prods. That's YouTube backslash Nat20Prods. But 
here's what you missed last episode. So they put the, the gang got together and made a plan because as it found as they found out, the the artifacts of Assyrian were being kept back in the casino, the final throw. And these artifacts could be used to do a ritual to become a lich. So they put their minds together and did a, a, a heist, if you will, the heist that went right. They broke in, did very well. Makai flirted so well with a person that they have now joined their pirate band. Um, and uh, when they snuck into the warehouse, they sprung an ambush, knocked out all the guards, and it was then that the Red Mantis assassin contracted to kill them, jumped out of the shadows. After a very bloody battle, the Red Mantis assassin was defeated. Uh, Makai's character, Rally, earned the wrath of Akekek, the uh, Mantis <laughs> goddess of assassination. Yeah, it's, I love that name. Because uh, it's wonderful. Akekek. Yeah, get Akekek. settled with it on a, uh, or get stuck with it on a recap. <laughs> <You're sitting there. laughs> uh, Paizo. Uh, how do you pronounce this? Kukulu. <laughs> oh, Ian, Ian, how, some of the stuff they uh, wrote for uh, the Thermaturge. Oh, I definitely said a keki yeah. keki. And then I realized <laughs> that that was not it. I I love a keki keki. A keki, uh, keki. So, so once they once they defeated the Red Mantis assassin, they found a note saying that the ritual to become a lich was already underway on the roof of this very casino and would be completed by tonight under the full moon that being said that is where we're leaving we're starting off uh i will pull the gm card and say all five of you are together in the secret warehouse where they keep literally all the casinos gold and that is where we're going to be starting when you're ready find yourself in a room red blood mist is still settling from the air and landing on the cold cement ground of this warehouse as the armor and the two weapons drop with a heavy thud and a metallic clang the only thing left behind from the red mantis assassin is her helmet her weapons and the memory of the scars etched into your body and a letter telling you that in a few short hours lord malchus dornzar will become a lich and rule vire what do you do you said there was gold. So we're we're in the we're in a room with a bunch of gold. You are yeah. in the warehouse that houses all the gold this casino makes bi hourly. Um <laughs> so <laughs> so Jaeger uh having come across golds that is usually covering chocolate goes up to one of the <laughs> gold bars, picks it up and, and tries to bite into it, uh thinking that it's chocolate and just kind of like suckles on it for a while uh yeah your your teeth feels a very unfortunate click as the bone sets hard against the soft metal uh but once you start you know kind of sucking it like a i don't know i would imagine like a like a caramel Lollipop. bar you're fine yeah yeah cool yeah that's just what she does yeah kind of right. like a frozen rollo uh -uh. <laughs> oh yeah bad for your teeth but but great to kind of nurse for a while so yes, Sydney, do you have questions about the room full of golden treasures? Yeah, do I have enough pockets to carry this treasure? Um, we are playing pirates. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you are? right, playing pirates. I just I don't have a bag. <laughs> yeah, I will um, say each treasure chest is about like fifty pounds full of treasure gold coins. Do I have? So it's just like a job application. You have to be able to lift, lift at least fifty pounds, right? So that's that was the that was part of the pirate like tryouts, right? So we cool. definitely have this. We can lift these things. Yeah, yeah, of course. Besides the gold, it also fits one pippo. <laughs> yeah, I found that out too. There is enough for you. Yeah. So. This is good. How uh, many? How many of these can no beard lift? Hey, she's a strong lady. I know. That's what I'm. 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 I'm, le I'm legitimately asking as a as a small frog person. I'm asking if you can carry my share of the gold as well. Yeah, can I do like I don't know, like some sort of like athletics check or something to see how many of these I can like curl and carry out of the room while we figure out what to do about um, Lord Dorns are, of course, because we're responsible people. Of course, of course. Give me an athletics check. Oh, I sure will. I'm very excited. I'm sorry. Did you just say that we're responsible people as one of us is suckling on one gold bar and the other one tries to steal everything? 
The vault Some of us there. are responsible people. We didn't say we're good people, we're responsible people. I, I rolled. Like I- you know, the unfortunate part is it all, yeah, it actually all does come down to Pippo. Is it a through line has helped in every single scenario. Like- I, yeah, it was a. I was about to say, I feel like like Rally and Pippo are like the the only responsible people. Well, <laughs> the clown, Wait. the goblin clown, as the responsible yeah. one. Rally took a detour with the Queen of Blades for a while, and that was a little <laughs> question on that one of like, what's the motives here? Uh, Jaeger you held up a candy shop. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, if anything, you are being pirates. Speaking of which, Sydney, what's that athletic check? Uh, well, just for the record, I used my first hero point in my first roll because I just mm-hmm. couldn't accept that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got a 30, so um, I hope that means that I can carry 30 chests of gold out of this room. <laughs> 30 chests, uh, hold on, I gotta get my calculator because I gotta do some fast math, because 30 chests at 50 pounds of pop would be almost a metric ton or more than a metric ton, so I'm gonna say no, but Damn. you'll get three treasure chests each filled with 50 pounds worth of gold. Hell yeah. That's not bad. Considering you're con- considering you'd be carrying 150 pounds of solid money. I mean, that's I, not bad. I I will t- I will take it. Absolutely. <laughs> and um I will say as the person that is carrying the gold out of the room, um w- that one of those is mine and we can split the other two between everybody since I'm doing literally the heavy lifting. It's going to go to a beautiful cottage for me, me and my wife. So just take that in stride. Uh, PJ, uh, mm-hmm. last game you said that there, there's some match, might be some magical items around. Pippo's going to look for something that looks like a bag of holding. Oh, unfortunately, there's no bag of holding ah. in this warehouse. Ooh. Um, I know. I know. So uh, it's surprising. No transport, magical transport item in a transportation warehouse. Yeah, it's almost like they didn't want someone to steal all the gold in the warehouse. Well, that's that they're just being holy suspicious. crap. Okay, so <laughs> I just I just checked out just because I was curious. Uh, the price of gold per ounce and fifty what fifty pounds of yeah. So each one of those is over a million dollars. Every single one of those chests, yeah, is nice. over a million dollars. Oh, it's actually one million three hundred eighty-one thousand six hundred dollars okay. of gold. So you're all doing. <laughs> We're fine. Good. We're fine. DJ, question. Oh, uh, yes, Mackay. Is you said there was a back entrance to this room? Is there a way to just like open it and leave it open, or is it like something you specifically like? Is it a, like anti-chamber sort of situation? No, totally. So the uh, back entrance that Paddle came into uh, is still, it's basically two big doors that you can open up. Um, If you want to leave that open, there's also the way that you entered, which you can leave at any point in time. Uh, Paddle, I'm sure if they wanted to, would tell you that the back entrance does lead to the main city street. Okay, hear me out. We take our share, and then we just throw open the back doors. Let everyone else have it. Uh, That it, literally my thought exactly uh, uh no, like leave it open leave it open uh we have to be on the rooftop there is a potential lich problem oh yeah no we got that one right yeah yeah just just a few floors up <laughs> um, which means we're right in the strike zone of you know lichiness so we got to take care of that but lich sounds like milk which is what chocolate <laughs> i'm sorry um, in what in, in in please enlighten me into what way Milk sounds like lich. Lich. We don't have time. We don't have time. <laughs> yeah, uh, that that's Jaeger. Uh, just <laughs> we're moving on. <laughs> but, As yes, we're arguing about lich and milk. Pippo's <laughs> gonna a pull a Benny from the mummy and just okay. find a sack, stuffing it with whatever he can in there. And mm. also, they they should at least have a push cart here. So, like. To move the, things. The the push cart was the one that you came in on, which yeah, <laughs> Sydney's the push cart. <laughs> I got us more than enough. That is three yeah. million millions gold. of dollars. Six closer million gold. Te- yeah, technically, technically closer to four or four million dollars worth of gold. Yeah. So, but I think leaving the back doors open is gonna hopefully clear enough people off the streets that anything that happens on the rooftop or magic that pours out over the top of the building may not, you know 
We definitely need to pay the baristas that I caused a huge problem with across the way inside of the bakery. So really fast, uh, let's put this into some dice terms. I want um, whoever wants to participate in Viva La Revolution of the Gold, give me a thievery check, give me a stealth check, give me a survival check, give me whatever check you want to add to the total DC that you're using to make sure that people come in here and ransack the place. Michael, if you want to steal gold for yourself entirely, Give me an athletics check. Okay. Um, am I rolling again? Um, sorry. Oh, uh, um, this would be a different roll to help out with the open the doors and let people come and steal the gold. Hero point. Well, <laughs> question. Um, one of the reasons uh, okay. why I was saying the push cart was to put a lot of gold onto the push cart and just push the cart into the streets and to scatter it all over the place. So if you want to roll for uh, the idea of having everyone come in, yeah, you can have you can have a um, uh, check for that. The only push cart here is the one again that you came in with. Okay, but um, I am going to take some of the gold myself too. <laughs> all right, then just give me athletic checks for that because we we have to kind of divide and conquer here a bit. Uh, why are you doing that, Sydney? What was your roll? Um, I rolled an eighteen in acrobatics. Is that enough for me to help maneuver the gold out of the way of people as they come rushing in? To the yeah I'll, yeah I'll say you're starting to kind of strategically position it so that they can get to it without potentially stampeding one another um makai what was your role um so i rolled an 18 on the dice um i was wondering if i could use diplomacy to like start convincing the people like yeah this is a thing come on come get your gold this is a once in a lifetime opportunity come get rich yeah, I'll take that. Diplomacy check. Uh, give me the total for that. Thank you. Uh, one second. Got to get some math going. 34. 34. Nice. Uh, Fee, what was your check? Um, I did thievery. And um, I got a 32. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm going I'm to steal some shit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> steal, stealing some shit yourself and also letting others know uh, yes. how, well, others, how to steal the shit. Obviously, others, I will demonstrate slowly while also enriching myself as to how other people can enrich themselves. So I'm just like, you see this and then you put it in here and you see the other one and you put it in here and just stuff like that. I love that. Thievery lessons. Uh, Ian, what was your check and how much was it? Um, I got a thievery check for 25. Um, ah, Pada, I see we, we sink alike once again. Uh, Paddle is working through the uh, chests of gold. And basically, I was using thievery because you use thievery to unlock, to like pick locks, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just unlocking every chest I can. So they don't have to be broken open. Awesome. It's just just turning 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 any like key with my lock picking tools that I have that I can to open them up so people aren't breaking them on the ground and creating a lot of noise. All right, all right. Uh, really fast now. So Michael, what was your athletics check to take gold for yourself? How much was Actually, that? Actually, I decided. Can I roll a clown lore to uh, use my clown lore to ca cause a ruckus? A ruckus where? But but I'm here for it. What's ruck? Where's the ruckus? Uh, pretty much. Uh, Think, think it's like a Disney-esque like musical number, you know, throwing the gold, you're showering it, you know, that kind of stuff. It's While he's also, cool. in the meantime, throwing some money down his, uh, you know, leotard. Sure. Throwing I, out M Michael, Michael, leotard. where are you doing it? Are you doing it in the warehouse, in the casino, in the city streets? Uh, when, once we get the door open, when the people come in, that's... Yo, yeah, yeah, give me clown lore. Yeah, I already, I already rolled it, and I got a 28. Beautiful. All right. Okay. Has Pippa been wearing a leotard this entire time? Yeah. And I just why? didn't. I didn't. Yeah, I never put leotard. I don't know why. I didn't pick out a leotard. Uh, yeah, that definitely <laughs> wasn't all the case. So, uh, Are you telling me that piece. Paddle is not wearing a leotard too much with Pippo? No, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Um, I've been imagining you in this leotard. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. You've been imagining Pippo in the leotard. Great. <laughs> uh, so really fast, the DC to beat was 120. You all combined at 137, 
there is now a mass riot of people running to steal all the gold. Um, so it is very much like that scene in Hunchback of Notre Dame or Notre Dame where like you have all the performers in the city, like they're having one moment, the guards are having the other and gold's being thrown everywhere. And uh, <laughs> the guards that are on staff are like losing their minds. They're like, I, uh, what do we do? Uh, for, the remainder, for the remainder of today's episode, you all get a plus one to all your rolls. Not to hit and damage, just skill checks. Let me be clear. A plus one to skill checks. We're, we're, you yeah. did say all your rolls. Yeah, that's why I had to you immediately say, yeah, correct yeah. myself. Um, you don't want me hitting with a plus 20? <laughs> <laughs> you don't, want, you no. don't want that on your hands? I don't want that. I don't, what about I don't the 2D4 plus, 2D4 plus 12 plus 2D6 plus 8? Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, none of that. I don't want none of that in my life. <laughs> so, so we're causing basically like the nicer version of the purge. <laughs> no, it's more like the French Revolution breaking in and taking all the bri- purge? What? The nicer version of the purge is about no, to happen right. upstairs because no, right. we're going to go take over that lich. And we're um, going to make sure that he isn't going to enact the purge on the rest of the city of their souls. So uh, <laughs> let's go do that. Okay, but question. Qu- mm-hmm. Question. Answer. Why mm-hmm. is this a problem? No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I just want to know. I just want to know why, because as, as Novi had said, we are pirates. We steal. Yeah. Yeah. going to answer her. <laughs> because rather, mm-hmm. be translated, <laughs> revenge. Uh, that that makes sense. I understand revenge. All right, that's it. Thank you. Let's go. Uh, Enough. Sweet. Revenge takes a long time to say, it, Pippa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's just not a word word Pippa uses very often. <laughs> the other word before that was petty revenge. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we were looking for. Uh, okay, so now is the time to make a quick plan as much as you can. Uh, Sydney, I think you were going to say something at one point. If anyone else wants to like suggest a plan, raise a hand, let's discuss. If you want to learn something, ask me. I'll make a check and tell you. Well, you'll make the check and I'll tell you. Um, I was, nobody was just going to go up to rally and go, okay, there's a lich here. You and I, we're heavy hitters. We can probably take this guy down. And then we can maybe have like Jaeger go in, do some espionage, and then Pippo and Paddle. I just realized that you guys have very complimentary names. And then yeah. Pippo and Paddle just come in and like get them from flank them from the sides. And then maybe maybe Jaeger can like do some shadowy stuff and like descend on the head. Like, what are you what are you thinking? Because I honestly have been very right. distracted for the past day or so all right here's the plan uh and riley points himself riley point if anything goes wrong call back to me you vanguard you charge forward keep him busy you two he points to uh paddle and pippo all right you two get to sites anything you can get him to look either way keep him distracted you're going to be helping going to be helping vani here you're going to be helping riley you back and he points to jaeger anytime you see him looking at me or anyone else that's not you, give him an arrow to the eye, give him an arrow to the knee, give him an arrow to anywhere you can see. Anywhere he's not looking, you're shooting. Deal? Anywhere he is not looking, I shoot? Yes. Shoot him when he's not looking. looking at you. Just, yeah, yeah, just shoot him. I totally understand the plan. <laughs> this sounds like it, nothing will go wrong at all. Um, huzzah! Mm, something very the golden bar that you <laughs> something very possibly might go wrong. This is mm-hmm. a lich. This is one of the most foremost undead that ever existed. I have a question for you. Sure, sure. Um, we're like we're like surrounded by like the people trying to like get all the gold, right? Like they're like 
doing their thing, right? If you if you are still here by the time that massive uh, collection of people shows up, yeah. If you don't want to be, we can say it happens after you leave. No, I'm I, I'm just asking because if there are people around us, <laughs> I want to try and rally some to fight with us. Okay. Uh, but that's only that's only if we're still there. But that is like a party well, decision. Technically, technically, you were because you were. I if I remember right. Wait, Jaeger was literally teaching people how to steal. <laughs> just oh, just a few minutes ago, where yeah, it was true. teaching people how to steal things. So technically, I'm still there then. Um, so everyone else is left. Many, uh, <laughs> I don't know how many people are then listening to me, but can I try to like get them to fight with us? Sure. Give me uh, your choice of a diplomacy check or an intimidation check. Oh. Can I assist? All oh, right. Uh, so then I'm going to need you to roll as well, uh, Mikai. You can choose diplomacy, you can choose whatever you want to do. Diplomacy uh, or intimidation, you said? Uh -huh. oh, it doesn't matter. They're the same for me. All right. Uh, I, I have a 26. Okay, not bad, not bad. 26 people. Uh, 16 <laughs> plus 16, 32. Oh, okay. Um, 58. So, <laughs> I want to I wanna do it, though, by, like, standing up, like, on a chest and, like, raising the golden bar, like, I don't know, like a weapon as one would. Riley puts you on his shoulder. Oh, Yay! or that. Or that on, on the shoulder of just being, like, listen up, people. There is a bad guy, and that's all you need to know. And I want you guys to fight with me because I am. And then she just looks off into the distance wistfully, the chosen one. And that's it. All right. That's the speech. So, Very don't you smell like a boca? <laughs> <laughs> so, I. Uh, I was gonna make that quote. I might, I might still do that. We'll see what happens. But when I made the roll, uh, I said that you have uh, brought fifty-five of the people to your cause. Now these people have just gotten a lot of money, so they will not die for you, but they will be a nuisance for you. How? Hmm, what do we need to roll to figure out what they would die for? Yeah. No. 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 God. <laughs> yeah, okay. Fiend Jaeger, you're crossing. You're crossing streams here. Don't do that. <laughs> Who would they die for? Uh, Pippo. Um, right, it's Pippo. <laughs> um, the the round, the banner of Pippo. Anyway, <laughs> there is a massive amount of energy needed to become a lich. This is Ian's knowledge of Pathfinder rather than Paddle's knowledge. How, what do I need to roll to put Ian's knowledge in game so we're not running into this? Sure thing. Blind. You can do Arcana or Religion. <laughs> okay, well... Here we are. Or the all-powerful clown lore. Can I assist I, him in his recollection of things? Absolutely. You can roll for me either a religion or an arcana uh, check. Same. It's not going to go well. Huh? Same, and with the possible clown lore. I will, I will let you roll clown lore to assist. Yeah. I'm not helping him at all. I'm going, yeah, you remember that real good, bud. <laughs> What's your total, uh, Sydney? Uh, my total was 11. <laughs> Good assistance. Uh, hold on, really fast. Makai, saw your hand raised really fast. What was it? You are you, muted, Makai. You're muted, my dude. Sorry, my mother came. Um, huh. And I assist with a religion check. Yes, as well. Let me get that clown lord check voiced. 26. 26. Mm. Yeah, you're uh, you're pulling some deep, uh, deep, deep clown lore about how the first clown gave their soul to a psychopomp and became the forever jester, a very deep and psychotic being, uh, well known amongst all the travelers and and clowns alike. And I made all that crap up. Yeah. Uh, so well done. You tied Thank it. You. you tied it together. I, I have to. Yeah. I love it. Can't wait to fight him. Yeah, one day, one day, Ninja Legends will fight the Ever Jester, and it'll be a friggin' nightmare. <laughs> Them being sick. just like Pippo. Crap. <laughs> um, we'll just look up at him and just be like, "Dada," um, and just like honk honk. <laughs> uh, just honk back. They have like an entire conversation. <laughs> uh, Makai, what was your religion check? 
Uh, my religion check was a 16 plus 12, uh, so for a 28. Nice. Ian, what was your roll? Uh, how, how, do I, how do I assist Rally? <laughs> um, I got a 19 total. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, by your powers combined, you'll still good enough to know everything about a lich that you may or may not know already about TTRPGs. You all collectively now know in character. Uh, about the ritual, their powers, the energy needed, the whole shebang. There is a possibility that it, it may be best to have all these people tell others that this lich is coming and to look so they see it with their own eyes rather than putting a lot of souls up on the roof with us for them to pull together as energy to become the lich. Uh, 50 57 people is a lot of energy <laughs> yeah and i'm really afraid that they're not willing to die and they may not die but they'll definitely be eternally imprisoned within a philactrophy <laughs> so i don't think we should do that either <laughs> you know what it would help can i say this people suddenly just got an idea and turns a paddle and just go Why not we why don't we just burn down the building? Uh the, 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 the fire in the firebrand. Yeah. <laughs> um paddle, <laughs> you guys only hear one half of this. Hippo, we've been through this. Fire doesn't solve all our problems. <laughs> okay, look, the building. <laughs> No, you're right. Okay, I know the building would go up really quick, but there's a lot of people inside of it, and I know cash does burn, but we can't deal with that. Yes, the hill of gold would be amazing when the temperature gets high enough and melts it all together. And yes, he would fall into that pit of gold. Yes, that would look awesome, but okay, no, we, we, can't, we gotta save the souls inside of the casino pippo. <laughs> And his arms through the souls. <laughs> right. So Pippo's now super hard. <laughs> and Paddle is using everything that he, that they have learned from dealing with Jaeger in a candy shop to de-escalate the situation. <laughs> you know, Michael, I'm starting to think that there's a lot of bleed between you <laughs> characters because Rufa also is obsessed with fire. Mm -hmm. I and am money. not a pyro. <laughs> and stealing money when it suits him. I mean, it's a silly money thing, okay, but I am not a pyro. Sure, Jan. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Now, so the people are here. You have a bonus with all the chaos and, and distractions happening. Uh, they are willing to storm the first floor and distract the guards, taking care of the first floor. You still have about two floors after that, the roof being the fourth. It you they have some, so much time to get to the roof. What are you going to do? Can we have them specifically target the people with either keys or a sword on their mask? Because the guy who talked like the skin saw cult guy <laughs> was wearing a keys mask or a dagger mask. I can't remember. So just get them all. We've got 57 people. We're yeah. going to make it a buddy system. Grab a guy with a funny mask. Done. Fee. Um, I, are there windows to which I could climb out out and scale the building from the outside up to the roof i love your minds that Un unfortunately because it is a casino they try to cut off all windows to give you a sense of time of day or mm. a sense of time expenditure mm -hmm. um so you don't really have any windows but you can leave the building and climb up that way if you want the fastest way may be to take the stairs within the building yeah but if if there will be like obstacles on every floor mm -hmm. there won't be any obstacles outside climbing up also true the choice is yours you can try to move within the building to get to the rooftop or you can try to climb a 90 foot building to get to the top at a 100 foot building to get to the top now pj you can't can't offer that to me and think that i won't take the more daring choice choice is yours pirates firebrands Freedom fighters, what are you gonna do? Um, wait, do we have rope <laughs> okay, that I can but, throw down to have you help climb up? I think everybody. Okay, wait. You think rally? Rally's gonna be climbing the side of a building. 
when there are what? stairs as a possibility. You and Pippo could take the side of the building. No beard rally and, and paddle are going to take the stairs. Much more of a fan of stairs, plus, I haven't got my cardio in for the day. We'll just go and knees, high knees, which is stairs. <laughs> okay, what if we throw a rope down to you? <laughs> That's no fun. Fine, you can take the stairs. How well, long is it going to take us to get to that floor, the top of this place? Um, with the distraction, it's actually going to be a lot faster. Normally, I would have you guys roll against the guards, but considering a lot of them are being pushed uh, to the first floor for uh, the 55 people that are, are in there, as well as uh, the 30 minutes has more than passed for security checks. So a lot of the guards are worried about the money. So they're going to be storming you guys any minute to get to the warehouse. Uh, if you can get to the first floor, there will be no guard stopping you from floor two or three. And you can just coast on through. Yeah. Sounds good. Let's do it. I like this plan. Okay. So uh, you proceed to, uh, first of all, as you're about to hit the long uh, cement corridor to get back to the uh, casino, a bunch of guards start filing through. And there's like, you know, your 55 people break off and just shoulder check these guards. They fly back into the casino and the 55 carry after them. More guards start spilling in. And when they see the hundreds of people in the warehouse, they panic, they get their knockout spears and they run in there and it is a brawl. Um, However, in the brawl, you are able to slip and move past knocking a few guards unconscious should you want to until you're able to slip out into the main room. (laughs) Nets galore. Nets and and cream pies and gun blasts. Why? Sorry. Spear jabs all spear jabs galore. Absolutely. After we figured out how powerful clan lore was, we're all trying to get it now. (laughs) Yes. Take a time to like learn the way of the clown. You break off the main floor. You see the 55 people that... uh, Jaeger has recruited are now basically like a football scrimmage line, just breaking the guards back to the far end. As you're standing, you notice the walls. So the whole thing is circular and almost hidden from view. There's this kind of partition in the walls and behind it, you see a set of stairs curving up, going up the staircase. You get to the second floor. Pretty much you see people of a higher class, higher form of wealth, kind of gambling and, 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 and by being and having a great time, all the guards that were up there are now being shoulder tackled on the bottom floor. And much the same, the way the circular rooms happen, you find a little across the way, another partition and another circular staircase going up and around until finally you're on the third floor. Everyone give me a perception check. Yeah. I used my hero point to give the people gold. <laughs> I, I did it for it. a good cause. I will actually give you a hero I point back for that. Aww. Nice. Fact, I, I, I immediately use it. <laughs> in fact, everyone, everyone gets a hero point for returning money to the people. Yeah. Also, I would like to point out, Rally had, didn't, take, uh, didn't take any for himself. Oh. And another hero point for Rally for being the only pirate who didn't steal gold. Whoa, whoa, I just unlocked the chest. Like weird. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing? We're Steals doing no uh, gold. What did I make? What is what is we what is we doing? Uh perception check. Really fast perception check. I mean, listen. Oh right. I said I was only taking one of the chests for me. Like mm-hmm, y'all are mm-hmm. gonna get some. Like it's okay. I'm just kidding. Um, I got a 33 for perception. 25. I'm just saying I got a 26. You soon. Pippo, what was oh, that no, perception sorry, check? 25. 25? So good. Pippo, what was that perception check? And I was just going to say, and Pippo just wanted to burn down the building and stick it to the man, which 32. 32, <laughs> you see him. Um, yeah, no, Jaeger was absolutely stealing, so I don't know what y'all are. <laughs> 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 She's going to take that. <laughs> y'all taking that chaotic good. I'm over here in chaotic neutral territory just making money. <laughs> I mean, on one hand, I show them how to steal, but on the other hand, I also steal. You just... <laughs> and I just want to put that put this out there: chaotic fire. Chaotic fire is not in alignment, Michael. We've been <laughs> it over is this. Chaotic. Alignment. 
<laughs> oh, and I'm not a pyro. Followed by chaotic fire chaotic is my fire. alignment. Uh, uh, I got a 24. Okay, uh, for my perception check. So 25. Awesome. You all see this. You're on now the final floor, a small, very quaint, most lavish floor of the entire casino. Everyone up here is definitely the highest 1% of the city, the highest aristocracy. And at one of the tables, his stein in his hand, guns dripping off his clothes as he takes a swig back with a laughter, stopping Mick Chug. Looking at you all with a very growing panic, you see Captain Cruz Balix just go, oh, bugger me. Maybe the bubble. He reaches for the guns on his uh, vest and he starts to run, throwing a table in the air. Everyone roll perception. We have a race on our hands. Oh. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. I have a, qu- <laughs> I have a question. I want to do something. Okay, what's your question? Um, as as he gets up and tries to run, Jaeger still has the gold bar in her hand. Can I yeah. try to throw it at him and get him? I'll yes, tell you what, please. roll perception will make that your first action of the race. And yes. I, I have a question too. Is this mm-hmm. perception as perception perception or perception as an initiative? Per- it's an initiative roll, so I need perception oh, okay. as an initiative. Yay. 27. 27 from Sid. That's a nat 20, my boy. Oh, Charlie's like, I'm the rallying point, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Just catches the catches the table and throws it back at him. (laughs) One hand. (sighs) That would be epic. Please. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. All of our characters are great. Rally is probably the most badass character, though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Badass. Yeah, that we we came to that conclusion after week two <laughs> <laughs> 20, uh, 24 for me thank you fee 24 all right and ian what's yours uh 27 okay and michael what is yours same as ian 27 okay i'll let you guys go in the same turn um da, 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 ian, yeah get on my shoulders yeah the pippo paddle team <laughs> yeah <gasps> That's cute. Wait, but I also got 27. So can I throw the paddle team? Sure. Or we, we, or we could combine on your shoulders and make it Hippo. even bigger Mecha Shiva. Are we? Hippo yes. paddle Ultron. beard? Yeah. Hippo paddle it's beard? Like Ultron, but Hippo the new paddle pirate. beard. The new pirate. I'm writing that down. All right. Okay, anybody remember that one game where I think it's Breath of Fire where you can actually combine characters? Uh, yes. yeah, well, I think, I think that was Breath of Fire yeah. 3. Yeah, yeah. So that's two. what I'm envisioning right now. Hmm. All uh, right, I haven't thought about that game in a while. Oh, I love Breath of Fire 3. I haven't played a good Breath of Fire since Breath of Fire 3. 4 was okay, 5 sucked, but that's a different story. Uh, all right, so Captain Cruz Balix goes first. Now, this is a race, technically Ooh. speaking, you're going to be dealing with uh, obstacles and have to deal with them, and I need success points from the group to see how you do. But uh, the initiative will be helping me since you guys can all choose how to handle not only avoiding what he's doing, but how you're retorting. Since he's going first and you have removed the guards, which is actually one of the initial um, roadblocks in the race, I'm going to make this up. He throws the table, pulls the guns, and starts firing. He's going to roll to hit at you. No. <laughs> when the tension hits the air, he drops his mug, throws a table, guns come out as he starts strafing and running, firing at you. He rolls garbage. You see the bullets of his weapon spread far and wide, peppering the wall behind you. But a table is still looming in the air as it's coming close. He's already got one point ahead of you. It's a race to get to the door at the end of the room, the door that leads to the roof. First person in the chase, the race, is in fact Makai with that 20 crit. Because you crit your initiative, I'll give you the added bonus so you can deal with that table as a free action and still hit. tell me how you're going to close the gap with Captain Cruz Balix, who's currently Matrix running and firing at you. All right, so you, there's this little uh, thing called a pole vault. So I'm going to... 
back up a couple steps, take a running start, dig my spear into the ground, hoist myself up, flying through the air, land feet first on that table, kick it back down towards, ooh, shit, <laughs> oops, uh, kick it down back down towards uh, Sir Bibble Babble down there, blocking off his point of entry and any other, those last two bullets. As I'm landing, as I'm going down, second action, throw the spear right back at him. Give me an athletics check for that entire bit. This will be you getting over the first obstacle of the race. Open. this is a uh, plus one. Mm-hmm. I definitely forgot that plus one. Thank you so much. You said athletics? Uh, yes, sir. Uh-huh. It's going to be... I was a base 17. No, not 117. Get your... Get it together, my guy. That's going to be a 23. 23. 23. For DC to be successful was a 24. You missed by one Ah, point. All right, here's Ah. what we're going to do. Hero point. Roll it. I like it. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. I need an 18 or more. Do it. That... It's a 19. My desk is very (laughs) dirty. I did not think it that far ahead. It's okay. So that's a total of 25? Uh, Yes. 19. No, 26. Because it's 19 plus. No, 25. Sorry. It's 19 plus 6, not 7. Okay. The first success point for round one is on the board as you drop kick the table in midair. And then, as you say, attack Cruz with the spear. As he's shooting, the spear bounces off his shoulder. He whips around in pain, not losing stride as his good hand starts firing side shots. We still need two more successes for this round to be successful. And you can catch up with Cruz Balix. Next up, we have Wait. Sydney, Ian, and Michael. Do, what are you three doing? Don't I get one more action? Or uh, because this is a, a race, you get mm, one action. Never mind. All right, this is my argument. So I am not the best marksman. That's definitely Pippo, and it's split between the two of you, right? Because you have the nets for paddle are very important, and that's kind of range, Crucial. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So here's the thing. I have this thing called assisting shot, um, which if I hit the creature. Um, the next person that hits them gets a plus one circumstance bonus to their roll, or if a plus two, if it was a critical. So my argument is that I'd shoot first to hopefully hit them and give you guys, whoever's going next, a bonus. Can I com- combine that with something actually, Sydney, if you don't mind? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. What's up? Because mm-hmm. if she, if a Sydney, if a no beard throws Pippo, mm-hmm. he's sm- basically fastball special. Mm-hmm. Pippo actually has a, a uh, ability called Tailspin, where he can mm-hmm. actually knock somebody, and if he succeeds in the knock, it actually becomes a s- critical success. Can I? Okay, oh, so wow. I just want to make sure that I'm understanding right, because I don't know if I'm understanding right. Are you saying that you want No Beard to use Pippo as the assisting shot? Because toss I really the dwarf. like that. To- toss the dwarf. Or in this case, toss, toss the, the goblin. Monkey. Toss I, the monkey I, goblin. I will say this is my official GM rule. Sydney, <laughs> you want to toss the goblin, that'll be an athletics check versus an attack check. Now, the difference here is if you don't make the athletics check, Michael's turn will be wasted in this, re- this round of the initiative or this round of the race. But regardless, if you shoot, his turn will not be wasted in this round of the race. Will he still get a plus one circumstance bonus if I throw him as the assisting shot? Absolutely. Is, he's a shot put. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know what? Wow. <laughs> the workaround is gorgeous. This this, but this is the rule of cool, guys. I used all the words cool. needed. Shot. He is shot put. <laughs> I will shot put him over there. <laughs> I will shot put him there. Uh, the number to beat is 24, Sydney. Give me a 24 or above. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. You said it was an athletics check? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes! Okay, great! Oh, this is amazing! Sorry, one sec. Um, oh, I'm so happy. Oh, that's a 30. Let's go! Nice. Oh, yeah. I shot put him right in the face. 
space. All right, Michael, you get a plus one as you start flying towards Cruz Balix. Give me your check uh, to trip him with a tailspin. The DC to beat is 24. You get a plus one on top of the other plus one. Wait, does assisting shot give Pippo a plus two? Uh, Only if it's a crit. Only if it's a crit. It was not a crit. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I need, to, I need to add some large numbers, mm -hmm. which is actually a good thing here. Okay, so the plan now is throwing Pippo at the bad guy. And <laughs> I was telling Jaeger that climbing the outside of the building was outside of the question. It was like, out of question. We're not climbing the building, but now we're throwing each other at bad people. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I regret. I regret. I regret not just taking the outside of the building with rope. <laughs> I, I, will, I, wanna, I, will. I want I want that in writing. Yeah, I know. Hey, and after all of this is over, if, I if it makes you feel better, reap, reap the clip it and I'll send it to you later. <laughs> It'll be in the Discord. We'll tag you. Yeah, you can, you can replay it as much as you want. Uh, uh, Michael, what's that check? Tone. Uh, that check was a 38. Holy hell! Oh my god! So, success. so, so you and you and you knock him prone, right? That's that's yeah. The thing? Basically, Pippo's gonna basically uh, let's just say being tossed by No Beard, he latches onto the guy's face like a weird Monchichi, knocking him down to the floor. You and that Monchichi. Uh, okay, so. The other two, Ian and Fee, you can still do your actions because this is a race. The more successes you get, the more you can catch up and surpass Captain Cruz Balix. So what are you going to do, Ian? We need to get past... We're, we're trying to beat him to the rooftop, correct? Yes, the door is at the other end of the hallway, the other end of the uh, top floor. Do I leave it? I'm going to leave it all up to Jaeger. Why would I not leave it all up to Jaeger? How is this uh, captain that we have um, who is being Manchichi? <laughs> Say that again, Ian. <laughs> the captain who is being Manchichi. How far away is he from me? He is. So he's on the opposite end of the room. Uh, he is about 20 feet away from you. About 15, Ooh, 20 feet. Great. Okay. I am going to use my monk stance, Blazing Talon Surge. Which means I get to stride once up to an enemy. Uh, my movement right now is 40 feet, so I'm able to do so. Make a strike against him. Uh, maybe. Uh, does a 21 hit? 21. I put my notes for the AC. I know I went over this. A 21 does not hit. Ah, okay. Um, I... That's a shame. Um, I, can I transfer my hero point? To <laughs> um... I'm going to say no, because this is a race. It's not a full three action economy. It's only one Well, action. that's my action. Yep. Right. Uh, yes, yeah, so that means, uh, Fee, your turn. What are you doing in the race? Um, Yeager is <laughs> very hell-bent on yeeting that golden barrel directly at the captain. Um, okay. To stop him. All right. Make a range attack to hit with a golden uh, bar. That'll be your contribution to the first round. Uh, range attack, you said? Mm-hmm. You're asking so much. Ah, yes! What was it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Come on. It's a oh, 20. Let's yes! go! Yeah! Yes! Yeah. All right. All right. So, you guys not only hit the three success points needed to clear this, you beat it by so much that you actually get two movements up. You now start to surpass Cruz Balix as you have the 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 Manchichi clown boy roughing him up, and he basically grabs the monkey, throws him off his face, gets up, cling a bar of gold, smacks him in the head. He kind of wanders, hits the wall. He's just has a slight concussion as he's kind of like 
Johnny Depping his way across the room now. Uh, next round of actions is going to be Cruz Balix. You are two in front of him. He's one behind you. Very, very mad. He is going to... Oh, you know, raise a weapon, mm. he raises a weapon, pulls a trigger, and as you're running ahead of him, you see this gigantic chandelier above you. With the pop and crack of gunfire, the chandelier shakes, breaks, and starts to fall on top of everyone that is not currently a monkey gripping, you know, our boy's face here. So uh, that would be Sydney and Makai and Fee. I need you all to give me a acrobatics check or another check to avoid, if you can argue, another check to avoid a falling chandelier. Do you see the beat is 24. Um, can I argue that I use my stealth because I can be very sneaky and delicate and fast with my feet? as well as thievery and to like get my way out of this hmm. i would i would you argue fast on your quick in thinking when you're stealthing and thieving yeah yeah and i love where your head's up but i'm gonna say that still falls acrobatics to physically move out of the way of a falling chandelier PJ, is this you trying to get me back for that nat 20 but truly no <laughs> oh Ooh, sydney what you got well i mean we just said not 20, so I guess. Nice. Oh. Yeah, 20 productions. So it's, is that- It's because I love you so much, I gave you my power. <laughs> was I that was... acrobatics? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I mean to over talk you guys. Sorry, I was confirming. Okay, cool. No, you're fine. I got a 31. Still awesome. That's for you for not allowing me to still my way through it. <laughs> Consider me a humbled man. Makai, uh, what is your acrobatics check? If you want to make another check, you can argue what it is you're going to be doing to get away from the chandelier or to conquer the chandelier. Choice is Mikai yours. Makai uses diplomacy to try to talk himself out of it. <laughs> yes, I, I turn around to the chandelier. Oh, mate, you don't want to do that. It's uh, you, you, you crack all your crystals. You don't want to. Yeah. He's um, like, no. you know what? I am I'm not good enough to be enveloped by your crystals. You know, this is not gonna work out. Just let me go. <laughs> okay, so I'm assuming like this thing has like a massive like like I'm supported by a chain that was like shut off. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> it's gonna sound really dumb. But can I use either attack or survival to chuck my spear and pin the uh, chain back into place for, so we have enough time to get from under. Anime! Anime! <laughs> I, I have the power of my GM and anime. Look, and man, I've gotten this far. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, I will say your choice of a roll to hit or an athletics check. Your choice. All right, well, we're going to go for a roll to hit because that's... You just asked me if I wanted a plus 17 or a plus three. Sorry, a plus five. Oof. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get a quick roll to hit here. Does the plus one you get to that athletic check to make it a plus six change your mind? <laughs> Close, but you know what? I think I think I'm gonna I think we're gonna keep this one. Alright, so roll to hit, here we go. Be. It's a base 19. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's a 36. That in Pathfinder 2E terms, what we call, well, what I call a dirty crit, my dude ah. just put two more points on the board. As you take that, that awesome spear of yours, you throw it, and as the spear is coming down, everyone is dodging out of the way. You all see this thing is about to hit you, and suddenly it gets pinned to the wall. Uh, and I just turned to Balak. <laughs> as I'm like, I'm backpedaling. <laughs> Anime! <laughs> I can't um, that worked. <laughs> once again, you guys are so successful. Instead of one, one movement success, you get two. Cruz is just fading behind you as the three of you are just booking it. Uh, Paddle and... Uh, uh, um, 
Pippo, you can do, I need you to do for me right now an acrobatics check, DC 24, to catch up to your compatriots. Uh, and while you're rolling that, Makai, I saw a hand up. What's up? So, my spear is also returning. Yes, it so, is. So, question. When it returns, is Balak just going to get caught under this chandelier? He won't get caught under it, but now he'll have to get over it. Dang it. <laughs> uh, what's the skill again? Uh, acrobatics check to run knees to chest as fast as you can to, clip, to catch up. I only had to roll higher than a nine. Only had to roll higher than a nine. Did you? 27. Came in clutch with a two. <laughs> Ooh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Did no. not. Did not make it. <laughs> did not. Uh... Um, Pippo accepts their uh, chandelier overlord with open arms. <laughs> Paddle is like, yeah, chandelier. This might as well happen. Yeah, no, this might as well happen. <laughs> Pippo, what was your uh, acrobatics check to catch up? Luckily, I rolled a little better. I got a 27. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're, you're, pardon the pun, tailing behind them, but you're on par with the others. So Cruz is fading. You guys, if you keep getting like two two successes for every one success, you're gonna cut this eight uh, obstacle race in half. Uh -huh. uh, help, paddle. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, if you keep fine. if you keep separating yourself from Cruz and paddle, you're gonna win a lot. <laughs> You'll okay. be up there in no time. Now, I need to know uh, two things. First of all, what are you going to do? <laughs> Skip ahead right to that. What are you going to do when Cruz Balix trying to run like, so he does two things. He puts a hand on the chandelier and tries to parkour over it. He is very successful in doing so. In midair, he pulls out two guns, does this kind of crossfire thing. One, he shoots the ground in front of you. It starts, it breaks. It shakes and it falls out. So now you, the four of you need to make a twenty, a DC twenty four check to get around the entire floor around you, completely shattering. Number two, the other thing I need to know is what is Paddle's AC? Oh no! Way oh. higher than whatever you think it is. <laughs> um, I think it's a one. So yeah, right. Uh, my AC is a twenty six. Oh, 26. Okay, okay, 26. I'm I'm a small I'm a small monk. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It does it stacks up. It really does start to stack up. Wow. I do well, have something that the floor starts falling out from under me. I have mm -hmm. an interesting thing that I may want to try to use. Oh my god, is it because you're Yeah, uh, kind of. Like is it like is it like sticky? Do you I got I got so my level eight feet was water step which means i can run across the top of water <laughs> so i'm hoping i can animate jump from rubble to rubble to rubble let's go i, I was just gonna suggest for nobody to throw pippo again at this point this the worst so well last time honestly 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 this is getting so anime and i love it so much i'm here for it i mean if, if you just attach stuff. a leash to pippo she could just use him as a flail so Sold. really fast as Cruz Balix does his little hand plant, jump over midair, two gun draw, fires at paddle and fires the ground. Everyone else with paddle has to give me a DC above, 24 or above for getting over the giant hole in the floor. Paddle, you just got a dirty crit as this bullet just hits you square in the sternum for 40 damage. <laughs> nice. Jesus. Clean. Ooh, okay. Like, hits you the chest, and cool, like time kind of slows down for what feels like 30 seconds, and it's only been a fraction of a second as your body is trying to pump more adrenaline to the base of your skull and your heart to keep you alive as you're now chest shot from a bull. Is... You guys just saw what happens when you look away from the screen playing Frogger. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Uh, what's going on again? So, that was Cruz Balix's turn. He is three behind you. He has created uh, a, a DC 24 hole in the ground, and he is just crit for 40 damage on paddle. Not oh, yet. wait. 
44 damage. I'm sorry. I forgot it was a crit. Don't say oh no. Damage. Oh, wait, hold on. How much H? Hmm. Actually, Paddle's a surprisingly uh, beefy frog. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, being a monk. He's, oh, he's a battle toad. They, yes, they don't die they, from nothing. Mm -hmm. EJ, what skill are we Let's rolling again? It's uh, and toad. Up to you. Acrobatic. If you want oh. to make an acrobatics check, that is the initial uh, check. If you want to do something else, you can do an athletics check to do a long jump. You can... I mean, I take clown lore, but I have no idea how. I was gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna go for the lols and go for the clown lore. No, I got it. Give me clown lore. Give it to me. I have an idea. Coffee's hitting, and I'm Love turning. Man, yeah, I, the the fact that you're just accepting this so freely, it's great. Twenty six. Twenty six. As Pippo starts running, you see this the giant hole that you all now have to take care of. Pippo starts to moonwalk backwards over mid-air, and he's miming a rope going backwards. Once he's done with his mime, he turns around and continues unabated by the laws of gravity. Clown lore. God tier. Clown lore, hey, best lore. We need a teacher. What just happened? I don't know. I don't... I don't, I don't understand anymore. Well, there's the law of reality and the laws of Pippo. Pippo took a vow, vow of silence, and this is what they received in return. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, this is gonna work. So, <laughs> that being said, Pippo is able to mime his way through gravity. Because clown lore, <laughs> why not? Um, but let's assume anime. So anime. Yeah, we just said anime, and now I realize we're just in a JoJo's episode. Yes! <laughs> yes. Gay! I can see it now. Is it is it Pathfinder? Okay. Better. It's from Japan! It's from Japan! <laughs> now, uh, everyone else, I'm going to need another check to get over this uh, death drop. If Yeah, death drop. Uh, DC 24, what are you going to do? Well, I got a 34. And acrobatics. Oh, <laughs> um, so. that's a critical success. I was wondering if, because it was a critical success, I could try something. Um, but also, you can also say very much no. What's your thought? Since this is an anime, <laughs> and it's JoJo, I was wondering that as I jumped across the thing, if Pippo can moonwalk in midair, can I like do triple shot in midair? <laughs> Are you are you shooting at our boy Cruz Balix? Uh the answer would be yes. Then yes, I will give you that matrix jump, turn around, and pow 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 as you fly through the air. Whoa! All right, great, cool, great. I'm happy. A happy person I am. Very happy. Um, yeah. so happy right now. Um, okay. Uh, hmm. Uh, Sydney okay. didn't prep. Sydney didn't prep her role. She was nope, very I, ready, very ready to be told no. <laughs> I was, I was very ready. So the first one is a minus. First one should be a one, solid. I'm sorry. First what? one's regular. Yeah. So the first one is a twenty-four. Um, mm -hmm. the second one is a is a minus two. That's okay. 25. Okay. And the third one mm -hmm. is definitely not going to hit. That's an 18. That's okay. not going to hit. I want you um, to roll damage twice okay. on Cruise Bellix. Beautiful. While you're Very doing exciting. that, Fee, what was your check to cross this gap? And Makai, we'll get to you this in a second. Fee, what was your check? Uh, That is such a good question. Can you tell me again what I'm rolling? Sure. Uh, you can do an acrobatics check with a DC 24, or if you find another way your character would want to get over this death chasm, uh, you can pitch it to me. We'll go from there. Oh, no, I rolled a 28. Yeah, there, I'm good. Oh, yeah. You easily just, like, jump and do a kick-ass backflip. Uh, you are quite fine. Uh, Makai, what was your check? Um, so I... Oh, wait. As, I, as we do this... <laughs> Yeah. Is there a time where did the gold bar land that I threw? Can I like snatch it up? <laughs> oh, it's it's like a good twenty feet back. Uh, ah, you threw it at his head. It stunned him a bit, and he hasn't been the same since. 
Oh, well, I love having that effect on men. So like, you're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Uh, Mikai, what was your check really fast? Um, so I, 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 I had a quick question. Instead mm-hmm. of going for the jump, can I, as he's like jumping through the air and doing his like cool double shots and like one at 12 o'clock, one at eight o'clock, wherever he's pointing, um, can I just like throw my spear into the center of his chest and start running to collect a uh, paddle? Yes. It's the rallying point. Give, go behind. give me, give me an athletics check to encapsulate throwing the spear and then running and getting paddle. All right, all right, here we go. Here we go. While you're rolling that, Sydney, what was that total damage for both shots? Oh, it was 12. Okay. Pew, pew. So yeah, midair, like Trinity from Matrix. You take your shots. You see Cruz Balix kind of clearing the chandelier. The minute he lands, pop, 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 like his, his body whips with the shots. And you see blood start to kind of like, kind of burst through his tunic and his vest as he kind of starts breathing heavily, <sighs> drops his two guns. His feet are kind of heavy as he pulls two more. Uh, Makai. Uh, I got uh, I got a 23. 23. Wait, no, um, I forgot the plus one. That was all you needed to succeed. You're one point away from failure oh. and you clutched it. Ooh. Got that plus roll, one, baby. Roll damage <laughs> as you're rolling to hit Cruise Balance with the spear. Always remember your modifiers, kids. <laughs> Always remember your bonuses. <laughs> all right, that's going to be eight plus eight, 16. Um, 16 on the dice, and then well, it's just plus two because of the weapon, so yeah. Um, 18, 18 damage. So you throw your sorry. weapon, what? Uh, sorry, I forgot. It's not 18, it's 23. Sorry, I forgot the plus five. Oh, I forgot yeah. my I forgot my strength mod. Yeah, I was about to, I was like, oh. <laughs> If anybody so, shouldn't forget their strength modifier, it's Rally. <laughs> so you throw your weapon, you start running, you grab Paddle. Paddle, you just get picked up like a purse dog, and you are now the football as this man, this 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 beast of athleticism is just running and does this awesome leap. You are now caught up with everyone else. As you throw your spear, uh, you see Cruz with his two guns, gets up and he goes, I could do this all. Oh, bloody hell. As the spear goes through his chest again, it dissipates and returns to your hand. As he kind of slumps back down, he picks himself up by the barrels of his weapons. And the spear returned with his coat? <laughs> no, it returns wholesale by itself. Pippo, uh, you caught up with them. I think you have one more turn to jump this uh death chasm you okay. already make it um no beard's like nowhere around him to throw him right uh no everyone is on the opposite end of the the okay. hole in the ground at this point then yeah i'm gonna wait did i clown lore my with clown lore oh you did yeah my bad my bad uh okay <laughs> so his way across. yeah i'll be right back i need everyone to make a thievery check i'll be right back Ooh. Mm-hmm. I do have to say, it's probably the easiest thing to forget. Uh, you need to get over this hole in the ground. I want to use clown lore. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy. I, I I will give PJ, you know, full dispensation on that one. Uh, I'm going to ask if I can use clown lore for this as well. Thievery check. My thievery is higher. <laughs> At this point, I think Pippo is just like, <laughs> more meme than goblin. More meme than goblin. Has he ever been something else? Pippo's a meme Chi Chi. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Terrifying. Um, I hope the DC for thievery is not 24, because I just got a 23. Hey, I just want to say the captain got a dirty crit on Pippo, which means they definitely rolled a 36 with all their modifiers to do that. That's a if lot. not higher. <laughs> That's Yuck. a lot. Um well. Thievery, where you at, boy? Yeah, rogue. Where the thievery at? 
Really? Oh, here we go. Oh, that's beautiful. It is a gorgeous. Wait, nope. Never mind. What did I say? Below survival, above languages. On the character sheet. Yeah. No. 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 I, uh, it's a pretty <clears> one. <throat> oh. Okay. I should make fun. Here comes the boy. <laughs> I got super excited. I got super here excited about a twenty. Boy. Hello, boy. There he is. Here he comes. That is the here comes the boy. Goblin. Goblin boy. Are we are we still waiting for PJ to like arrive? Oh, oh uh, as you can see, PJ is right over there. I feel like I feel like PJ will just come with like a prop and he'll just be like, "I got this, guys." <laughs> right. The prop was beer. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the prop, PJ? Where's the prop, PJ? Yeah. What's the prop? What are we talking about? Props? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's totally unfair. I have no idea what we're talking about. Props? It was peace. It was Fee's fault. <gasps> oh, Fee. Oh, oh, doggy. Everyone watching at home drink water. We got a dog on camera. Oh, is uh, that a thing? What? I guess. I mean, people have like drink when you see a cat appear, drink when you see a dog appear. Is that a thing? We also should just have it in our chat. I mean, yeah, just drink some water. Yeah, I, some thought, water. I thought you would take longer, PJ, and I thought I could entertain the masses with my cute puppy, but now you're back. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I don't want to ruin dog time. Nothing. What's, she can, the, she can what's the puppy's name? What's her name? Uh, her name is Yume, which is Japanese for dream, because she's my dream. Because I always <gasps> a puppy. Oh. oh, yeah, the dream SP. I love those guys. Yeah. Uh, that being said, what was your uh, thievery check before I left? Uh, 31. God dang it. Okay, okay. I'm a rogue for a reason. Mm -hmm. Um. Can I actually just, can I once again use clown lore in, in lieu of thievery, even though it's lower? Yeah, if you want to. I think I have an, a way to make that work. Okay. Of course you do. Of course, of course. Uh, so I got an 18. I used the right thing, but that's fine. I want to hear the story. We should, we should, everybody else should tell their tale before we get to the yeah, yeah. beautiful story they'll get to the clown lore. <laughs> Okay. Listen, so PJ came up with like the immortal jester. Okay. That yeah, yeah, right. Us in our dreams. The forever sure jester. Has something. Which is something we totally won't be encountering in October at all. Uh, oh, not not Shire. not this year in October. I feel the forever jester lives in Daltonshire at this point, and his uh, name is Penny. Um, I got a twenty-three. I hope that's okay. As one point shy of a of a success. I knew. Ooh, what a coincidence! I got a twenty-four. Okay. I was several points shy. Can I? Don't say <laughs> okay. this is I my can Donate a hero point. No. Uh, and now can... this is the clutch one because this could be the final one. Clown lore. Can you save us, clown lore? Twenty-five. You beat it by one point. Thank you, Jesus. As you get to the end of the room, you see the door to the uh, roof is locked. You start working in a panic and hurry. Uh, Fee, Jaeger sees that you can get it, but you're just having a hard time with the constant gunfire as a mortally wounded um, Cruz Balax is just walking and taking pot shots at you as you're hunkered down by the door trying to pick it. Uh, some of you are trying to break the lock, some of you are trying to pop it. You can't quite get it until Pippo get the balloon pulls it and turns it into a key slips the balloon key into the lock and then opens the lock with a balloon key couldn't what have tried that earlier balloons? what kind of magical Dude. we don't have time we don't have time <laughs> just looks up at Jaeger just goes the demigod <laughs> so Somebody clip that, please, for the love of God. Oh, Rick, wow. I'm counting on you, buddy. I'm counting on you. Uh, so you pop the lock with your your balloon key. Are you it opens up. You throw it in the ground. You open the door. You see a very short ladder, about a five, ten foot ladder, to a panel above you. You all scamper up, knock it over. It's not even locked. Once you get on top, you feel the cool breeze of the night life in Vire, the cool night breeze of Vire kind of wash over you. You see the moon high in the sky, and it looks like an eyeball that has been recently uh, lacerated. It's all white and blood is slowly starting to fill the eye. The full moon slowly turning into a blood red moon. As you do, as you see this, 
You see a green thin beam fire past all of you in the midnight sky. Following the trail, you see Captain Cruz Balax coming out of the uh, same panel you did, guns drawn. The beam hits him in the chest. You see his skin age and wrinkle until it falls to ash. You see his eyes melt and fall out of his head, and you see his body left nothing to bones and dust as he drops dead and fades in the midnight sky. And oh. that is where we're taking our five-minute break. When we come back, the final fight, the final moment of the final episode of Firebrands, the fire of life. We'll see you in five minutes, so we'll see you actually pretty early. 9.30 p.m. is when we should be coming back. Enjoy your five minutes, everyone. We'll see you then. Bye. I just want to say Indiana Jones, Last Crusade. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for that brief five-minute break. We are glad to be back, and we are here with the exact final fight of the final episode of Firebrands, The Fire of Life. As you all turn from your betrayer slash captain slash job provider, Captain Cruz Balak being turned to ash, you look across the roof and there hovering 10 feet off the ground, you see the form of Lord Malchus Dorinzar. And at his feet, you see the three artifacts you've been tasked to find. And as the moon becomes blood red, Malchus himself begins to look suddenly extremely old, very powerful as his eyes cease to be the milky whites of a mortal man and the green flames of the ever undeath. And he turns to you with one long gnarled fingered claw in the soul of Captain Cruz Balux going into his mouth like a grape plucked from the vine. He looks to you and he says, "'Twas greed that killed the pirate captain. Will be bravado that kills his crew. I am Lord Malachis Darns are no more. I am the lich. Lord Malkiar. Uh, no beer is going to turn to Rally and be like, you're the religious guy, right? Rally is like too busy just like making puppets of like making me. Sorry, what? Never mind. Um, hey, old dead man. No. What she said. <laughs> also, can I have his coat? Um, Jaeger will, I feel like whenever I say something I want to do, Ian just internally shudders at, like, the consequences of what will happen. We're only <laughs> here for one more episode. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, Yolo. Yeah. Do what Jaeger, you do. Yeah, Jaeger uh, will do what she does best, and she will waddle up a little bit and just be like, Sir, I, I I heard that um with with the kind of complexions that you have, you know, given that you are very old and disgusting looking, um, chocolate might help. And she offers a golden chocolate coin. <laughs> Wait, like <laughs> chocolate? What are they selling? Chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> oh, sweet, delicious chocolate. Oh, I remember when they placed. Man, we took this in an entirely different place. I was about to hit him with I the Aragorn. See with the Aragorn speech to the dead. You have my word. <laughs> Fight with me and I will free you from your bonds. What say you? What? <laughs> um, I'm guessing we're all getting a uh, free action here before the Yes, battle. and we're all quoting movies that don't exist uh, inside the Pathfinder world. I will say, I will say since there is a plethora of smack talk and Malchus Dorinzar is not having it with his first couple minutes of what he perceives to be mortal life. Everyone makes a perception check as he starts chanting and seems to be casting a spell. Make I'm a perception sorry, he doesn't want the chocolate. If you want to make a diplomacy check for your initiative, you're more than welcome to. Please. I want to do that. Go right ahead. I was wondering while everybody's going off and saying all this stuff, Pippo the silent one, can I roll a uh, recall knowledge clown lore? <laughs> so if, uh, 
there's any way to how to be a lich. I, I as Michael, I know how to be a lich, but mm-hmm. I want Kipo to also know. Okay, so the the legends of the Forever Jester says that he uh, is indestructible so long as there's laughter in the world. So you don't know how to kill the Forever Jester, but you can make a religion or an Arcana check as your initiative to recall knowledge on fighting a lich. The Forever Jester doesn't sound so bad though. Not yeah. Cool. It, it, it's just as creepy as it is nice. If yeah. there's laughter in the world, I shall forever live. Unless, oh, no. What if it's Wait, powers? Laughing gas. Is this? <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah, is this a we're, we're on such a, yeah, we're such, on such a tangent. Okay, we're clown, clown lore. How do we beat this lich? <laughs> yeah, I, I want to roll that. Clown lore. Right. So, well, like I said, um, like I said, the clown lore would tell you that no one can defeat the forever jester but you can do an arcana check or a religion check for your initiative oh, okay. to recall knowledge. Okay. So as the chosen one <laughs> who offers the lich chocolate and chocolate coin, I have rolled a 29. Okay, so Fee's initiative is a 29 diplomacy. Is you're like, candy? Uh, <laughs> giving everyone else's initiative. So can I roll a religion for uh, initiative? I will allow that because I see a critical 20 from Michael. That's incredible. Uh, I will allow that. Yes. As you're like, oh, yes. Undead. Religion check for liches. A little flavoring of clown lore. Are you actually doing clown lore for that 20 crit initiative? Yes. (laughs) Okay. All right. I'll give you a freebie once you get in there. Not a free action, but some free lore. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, I got a nice young 31, 19 plus 12. Oh, wow. Nice. Okay, I got a, you said 31? Yes. Okay. Um, Ian, nice. it was yours? I came in with a 31. Ooh. Damn. Uh, mm-hmm. Makai, what's your dexterity modifier? Uh, probably not as good as the monks. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I have a uh, plus three, so 17 to my dexterity. I have a plus three. Minus two. Oh. So a plus one. <laughs> nice. I was like, wow. All right. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to flip a, my waffle maple syrup. If you're watching the dice you've given me, I'm going to flip a coin. Heads, it's Ian. Oh, no. Tails, Ian get it, Kai. butter. Let's go. It's Tails. It's uh, first. no butter. Butter always hits the ground first. Always does. Was All high. right. Next up, Sydney, what is your initiative rule? 25. 25. 25. Ooh, bad roll from the boss fight at this final fight. Let me confirm. Okay. Ooh, shit on. <laughs> sorry, it made me laugh. Uh, mean, sorry, okay. get pooped on. <laughs> this is this for the kids. This is, it is for St. <laughs> Jude's Children's Cancer Research. By the way, donate to save children, please. Please, if you can, find the link. Give anything you can. Uh, not only is it being done by an amazing human being, but being done for an amazing cause. So please uh, hit the link and donate whatever you can. Uh, and be sure to tune in to the end of the week as the person running this awesome thing, Wes Johnson from Wes underscore IRL, the leader and head of Cosplay IRL, will release a very awesome uh, video that he did based on Fortnite. I recommend it. I saw it. It's super dope. So if you donate, you get to see it. Do what you can. That being said, all I'll right. Donate now. I don't want PJ to be the only one with that kind of information. <laughs> you can't You can't trust your GM with forbidden knowledge. So if you want to learn what I learned. Got to donate. <laughs> Got to donate. Got to uh, donate. So really fast, I'm going to send a quick message to Joe, the boss. The boss. The boss, Okay, cool. So, the music playing. In the midnight air, with a blood moon over a high over the city of masks, keys, blades, whispers, the lights. The god of madness who skins the flesh off the bone. One man was dumb enough or brave enough to bribe a captain of freedom into stealing from the Osirians, from their necropolis, to take three pieces of their old ways gods and from it, skip the difference between life and death, find them both within the gilded pocket of the psychopomps and lie to the universe and say that I am forever alive 
My eyes are lit with the fire of life. But is life really for the undeath? Or is life for the rebellious few that spit in the face of oppressors and feel the breeze in their face? This is the battle to decide what life is, what freedom be, what power should. This is the final fight between a lich of the undeath and five rebels. Starting off this conflict for the final episode of the Firebrand's Fire of Life, we have Michael Pippo, the clown god of laughter. Give me your first action in this epic battle against the lich. Michael, what do you do? Well, first with that 20, I was hoping to get that some of that recall knowledge on how to right. defeat a lich. As you pull your guns out of your little monkey pockets, you know, goblin pockets, you remember the tale of the forever jester. Monkey pockets. <laughs> A mortal jester whose only goal in life was to make people happy. The ultimate struggle of the clown was through the happiness of others, finding happiness for oneself. Through the joy of the audience, can you finally feel joy? The forever jester lost himself on this journey to find for himself purpose in laughter, stealing immortality from the psychopomps and gods of death until, yes, he found immortality so long as there's laughter in this world but he knows all too well that even though his spirit may come back to his form when a child giggles or when an adult laughs he still must physically die a lich has a phylactery and their spirit may be immortal but their body their body is very good at dying all right um First action, actually, Pippo's gonna, with, I guess, let's just say with his tail, he's gonna pull something out of his pocket. And it's pretty much gonna throw it, toss it like a Pokeball, which is a um, feather token of the whip. Okay. That's one action to activate, yes? Yeah. Two more actions as the whip pops up next to you. Second action, can I do uh, seek to uh, look for anything that looks, well, at least to Pippo, a phylactery, like looks. Yes, give me a, a perception check to seek a phylactery in this ritual area. I'm going to use my hero point because I rolled a three. Use them while I got them. Oh, 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 that is much, much better. To be much. fair, that's the first bad roll Michael has had all night. <laughs> I, I'm really happy that we have a through line. <laughs> somebody who's willing to do the math for us. So we have somebody who's constantly moving forward. <laughs> uh, I got a 32. Ooh. Case in point. So, <laughs> as you look at the Lich himself, Lord Malchus Dorinzar. He's a man of money. He's a man of means, ambition, and vanity. Around his neck, you see a locket, a family locket, one that he had to earn through birthright. And as you look right at it, you see this un this horrible, ghastly green glow that matches the green flame in his eyes. The locket is his phylactery, because he has not had time to hide it if you can kill him tonight under the blood full moon of fire, you can stop his soul from ever reincarnating as a lich. All right, final action. Do I know who, would people know who's gonna go after him? Or uh, what? no, it's all kind of instinct at the first round anyway. Uh, can I just say uh, last action, he's gonna use aid for whoever goes after him to uh, basically his way of using aid would be Letting the group know, aim for the phylactery. And ah. I just realized Pipple doesn't talk, so it'll be like. All right. So I'm going to say you're going to withhold that last action for the next person who attacks him. Yeah. They will get a bonus to this roll to hit. That being said, next one up. Ring the battle cry. The rally point is rised. Rally. You have risen. Take your first turn. Uh, Rally 
is very calm. Rowley's surprisingly calm for facing down a lich. Uh, he has his spear in his mouth. He's walking forward, giving a couple of stretches, puts his hair up, um, and simply looks the, um, oh, come on, where are you? Uh, and he's gonna look the lich in the face and says, I fought bigger? I fought better. And the last time I fought one E, it took me crew. So how about the second round? And I take you. Uh, and I'm gonna use Bon Mott. Bon okay. Mott and then followed by Boaster's Challenge. Okay. Give me the Bon Mott roll first. I'll be one action, Boaster Challenge with the second. Dope, dope, dope. Um I also entered with um I also entered with uh religion does that make get me anything or yes uh lich count is undead uh if you are a champion who has made the oath against the undead aka the shining oath paladin you'll be getting four bonus damage if you are expert and six if you're master proficiency every time you use your retributive strike against this person you know that the undead hate the light the light of a good man Sadly, I do or not, woman, it's not really gendered. Fair, fair, fair. Uh, <laughs> sadly, I do not have that specific ability. But what I am going to do... Or, well, here. So, Bone Mutt. Right, that's going to be 17 plus 16. Shit. I almost dropped my phone stand. All right, so 33 against their will, DC? Yes. That's a critical success, my dude. Oh, wait. Did I say 33? It was supposed to be a 34. I forgot that. Plus one, baby. Hey, it's still a Here's crit. A you one, can't baby. crit more than that. <laughs> can't double crit, sadly. Uh, but yeah, the target is distracted. Takes a minus three penalty to perception will saves for one minute. The target uh, can end the effect early with the tort to your bond mod. This character uh, can either be a single action that has to concentrate uh or an appropriate skill action to frame their retort. The DM determines the skill, uh, determines which skill actions qualify, though they must uh, take at least one action. Typically, to uh, the retort needs to use a linguistic charisma-based skill action. Jesus Christ, that was a lot. It, yeah, but the good thing is it was effective. Now, give me that boaster's challenge. What is that role for that boaster's challenge? So, boaster's challenge, I believe you are having to save. Good. Uh, let me double check. Let me. Get you the one specifically. I had these all lined up, but I didn't order them correctly. All right, so uh, with Boaster's Challenge, uh, you call out a foe, causing them to become flustered and easy, uh, easier to defeat. It's like one creature you can see and declare, uh, declare a challenge for, uh, declare a challenge. Um, deception, diplomacy, or intimidation against the creature's will DC. Oh, okay, so that's on you. Uh, give me... Give me intimidation check. Damn. I mean, Rally walked towards the lich with the with his spear in his mouth. <laughs> if anything, at that point, it's like it has to be intimidation. Yup, that's yeah. a solid thirty. Wait, no, <laughs> thirty-one. <laughs> so, what happens when you crit the boaster's challenge? Could you please tell me what happens then? Um, on a critical, yeah. on a critical success, the status bonus uh, lasts for. Oh wait, so I get plus, I get plus two uh, to, Jesus Christ, what am I doing here? <laughs> if you see it gets plus two bonus damage on unarmed strength. Um... So you get uh, plus two damage on a regular or on a critical success? Might be the same, cause that's fine. Maybe it might just last a little longer. Yeah, it's so, okay. So on a critical success, it looks like it lasts for three rounds instead of just the one round. Dope. Now, you have, you receive the full attention of a recently converted lich. On top of that, you have properly boasted and told this man that you're gonna take him, take him down. You have one action left. What are you gonna do? And if I use smite evil, that is a charge up or is that like an actual attack? I forget. How do we use it last time? That's absolutely fine. I believe it's one action to activate. Let me confirm that quickly for you. I believe it is. 
I Damn. believe it is one action. But the good thing is, that means you have all that bonus happening the next round to smack his mm-hmm. face into his neck. Uh, uh, and yeah, so I'm going to yeah. take the spear out of my mouth, slam it into the ground, and hit uh, activated nice, simple smite evil. But I'll tell you what, I'll give you the first one. So you walk up, you say your speech, you grab the spear from your hands, you lift it up. As you lift it up, the the spear ignites into a holy fire. You can see the ghost, the spiritual essence of Lubaiko behind you, just nodding, like just arms folded, nodding, looking at the dead man. The lich looks to you, looks the goddess of fire, freedom and rebellion behind you and goes, Let's see how far this undead man can take his first steps as a god. You want to take my life, little mortal? Sounds like a worthy first day on the job. <gasps> you suddenly see this kind of, almost like this this, this scope, this crosshair just on your face as he has targeted you for his wrath. But it's not his turn yet, because it's That's Ian's turn. Paddle, what are you going to do? It's okay. <laughs> how how far away is this lich from me? Thirty and feet. Thirty feet. I don't want to interrupt the showdown that's also about to happen. I would love to hold my action when the lich goes to strike rally. I would like to then use my blazing talon surge, which is basically an attack roll, but. I think this showdown may be in our favor <laughs> uh, with the smite evil being first strike against the lich and everything else just follows it. So I, I would love that uh, paddle sees this happening in front of them and they know they haven't really stacked up as the battle master. They should be as a monk tonight. So they kind of sit and waiting ready to strike using ready with their dexterity you know their reflexes to be able to strike when rally and them uh, inevitably clash right all right as paddle starts to pick his shots and ready his action for when the the lich tax rally uh it goes to fee fee what is jaeger doing what is Jaeger doing? She's still standing there with the goddamn chocolate coin and nobody is like protecting her or like doing anything. She's just like, I got this for you <laughs> while everybody is like throwing shots around her. So, chocolate, right, so you're like sitting there with a coin. Chocolate. It, it becomes quickly apparent to you that that golden chocolate coin is getting no love. And this lich really wants to kill your champion friend who has walked past you with a blazing fiery spear uh, high in his hand, challenging this undead monstrosity. Can I just say, I'm just now envisioning Jaeger like one of those kids outside supermarkets selling candy bars. (laughs) You want to buy tagalongs? What about Thin Mints? I just want to make a new friend. I always give them money. It's immediately, I don't need the candy, but I, I it, it, wallet is out every single time. Yeah. <laughs> Kills me. Um, I, well, I'm assuming the Lich is then totally not pay att- like paying attention to Jaeger, right? Because like all, all of the focus. Yeah. Um, well then I will, for my first action, will try to sneak behind him. And then as my second action, I'll do a sneak attack. Okay, uh, if you want to actually stealth around him, you can. Yeah. Uh, he is 1,000% focused on Rally. You can actually just move, generally speaking, with one action and flank him if you wish. Sweet, then I'll do that, and I'll do my uh, really cool ability, which is the sneak attack. All right, roll to hit. You, now that you are flanked, he is flat-footed, and you get your sneak attack bonus. I'm going to use a hero point for this one. <laughs> okay. Well, that was not That was not what I wanted. That was not what I planned. And I just got to say, I do not understand. understand. Thank you. Something. Uh, and then I just have to add 
what's to that? Uh, so you roll the d20, you add your dexterity modifier, your level, and if you're an expert, four more points. Yes. Am I an expert in... It would be, it would be stealth, right? Uh, this would be, uh, just an attack. Uh, an attack roll. Oh! But it is a melee strike. Yeah, okay, sweet. I have... Wait, I have way too much. <laughs> what? I know we did... Ooh! Hey, wait. Uh, 18... I'm doing this with, like, uh... Like, with a melee, right? Mm -hmm. Melee strike? Mm -hmm. Um... Okay, if I'm reading this correctly, it's, like, 36? 36? Yes. That's a dirty crit. That's a dirty crit. Oh, you get shit. to double the damage of your weapon, double the sneak attack, and double the bonus modifier. It's this is gonna get stupid, y'all. Let's get stupid. Okay, okay, wait. Then I need to. Okay, so sneak attack was two d six damage, which becomes four d six damage. Okay. So, okay, that's, <laughs> I can't, I can't. No, that's that. Four, very five. fair. That's five plus four is nine plus two is 11. All right, that's 11 from the sneak attack. Uh, what weapon are you stabbing them with again? Uh, with a rapier. All right, that's another 46, as you should have a greater striking rapier. So that's at least another 46 on top of that. Sweet. Okay, so we have 11 plus. Mm -hmm. Wait one sec. This is being stupid. Uh, we have right 11 ahead. plus 2, which is a uh, 13 Th plus 6 uh, is a 19 plus 3 is a 22 plus. Another six, hell yeah, which is a 28. 28, nice. Now, Rapier also has the deadly D8. I need to roll another, uh, first of all, what was that, 20, 20, what was that? 29, 28? Shit, 28. what did I say? Okay. Uh, 28, so it's 11 plus 28, correct? I need you to roll another one D8 for me. Five. Five, now, what is your strength modifier? Uh, Ooh, rapier is a finesse weapon. True, but uh, they still take bonus damage off their strength. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's a strength weird. Strength is thing. I don't have a modifier in strength. That's okay. Zero. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Now I have to do math. How much damage you just did in that one strike? Uh, because what you did was eleven plus twenty-eight plus. Five plus two. You just did forty-six damage in one strike against this guy. Mm. Oh, Delete. gorgeous! Delete. <laughs> right, right. Oh, wait See, a minute! This is what no. you get if you don't want my goddamn chocolate coin. That's right. I, <laughs> I actually lied. Uh, it is forty-eight. Mm. Ooh. This is why I handed that candy shop owner a health potion. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, this reason. Yeah, do as an NPC. You would have had like five HP. You would have killed yeah. him ten times yeah, over. Exactly. Uh, so you you move around him. You drop your weapon straight. No, whack. You see his body. The blade pierces through his meaty body and form. He has no reaction. You can almost see this kind of like quizzical confusion as. What is that feeling? You have one more action left. What are you gonna do? What? What is this feeling? He is questioning my blade. <laughs> he is questioning <laughs> your blade. How dare he question my blade? Um. Well, I do. I have that. Wow! Look at me go. And um, what? What else do I want to do? Oh my god, stab wait, him I, a kid. Ooh, yes. Yeah, I know. I have wait, I have Sly Striker. Mm -hmm. I wanna I wanna check up on that. Alrighty. Um 
Ooh, okay, what was it? What are you? What do you do again? The archives are down for maintenance? Yeah. No. Wait, what? Man, I sure am glad I kept all of my pages up from last week. <laughs> Ouch. A strike uh, from... Bueno. This is a strike from this guy. Does anybody know what Sly Striker does? I'm looking <gasps> at it right now. Oh, what's up, Sydney? No, she's right. The archives are down for, yeah. for maintenance. I'm so glad I pulled all of my things up before that happened. Ah. It's, we're all smarter than me. <laughs> it's moments like these that you realize how your players prepare for a game. Uh, hold on, I'm Listen, actually. At... I thought my chocolate would get me like places, and it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm overwhelmed. Uh, Sly Striker. I'm on a different website looking that up myself. Okay. Your attacks deal more damage even against creatures that aren't flat-footed. When you succeed on succeed or critically succeed at a strike against a creature that isn't flat-footed, you also deal 1d6 precision damage. This applies only if you're using a weapon or unarmed strike that you could deal sneak attack damage with. Uh, so at this point in time, basically, you can sneak attack him again since, to my knowledge, he is still flanked. You will be at a minus four to hit him again. That's nothing. Do it. You can always <laughs> roll in that 20. You can always roll in that 20. There's no reason not to. I mean, you already have almost 50 points of damage on the board. Might as well roll again. Do okay, it. Okay, fine. Okay, okay, okay. Jaeger it up. <laughs> Jaeger it up. Okay, and if you, I need to use my hero point again because that was a nat one and I don't do with that. Well, <laughs> oof. Um, I, so... I didn't say paddle it up. I said Jaeger it up. <laughs> so I will roll again. I'm so sorry. All right, um, and I, uh, um, and then I need to uh, twenty plus. What was it? Two strike again? Uh, I forgot it, everything. It's okay. So, uh, what what did you roll in the die face? Uh, I got an. Uh, oh my god, where is it? Sorry, I have it like up online. Uh, I got a sixteen. So on the die face, cool. So, uh, it's at a minus four. So it'd be your level, which is eight, and mm -hmm. then uh, your dexterity modifier, whatever that would be. Okay, so minus four, so that is a 12 plus eight is still a 16. Uh, plus, you said what What modifier? Uh, so it would be eight, your dexterity modifier, and whatever you rolled. Four. Uh, 12, 16 plus four, 20. 20 total? Yeah, because it's I rolled a 16 minus four is 12 plus. What's your, dexterity, what's your dexterity modifier at again? Plus four, plus four. five, four, okay. Four. Okay, so total is 28. Oh. Because the minus four would be for your expertise. Don't worry about it. Here's the thing. You miss by one point. <gasps> no, wait. He's flat-footed. Wait, he's... You hit by one point. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm, it is that one point. This is why, why flat-footed makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. Roll damage, you get your normal rapier damage, which is 2d6, oh. plus your sneak attack, which is 2d6, plus your strength modifier, which is zero, but you also get a plus two. Okay, wait, I need to first go back. Okay, we, we're rolling, we're rolling 2d6, yes? Four. Yes, sir, 2d6, roll, roll, roll a total of 4d6, let's make it even. All right. Um, five, one, six, 10, 12. All right, that's for the total of the 46. Yes. All right, 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Come on now. So you stab him once. You pull out your weapon, you bring it back, and you go for another deftly strike you can you're basically picking your your shots against an undead body that would normally work um you see his body recoil with the impact but there's no cell from his body that anything you did has hurt him but you can tell his body is bleeding and the skin is is, is ripped open the bones have been broken but he just sh he shows no pain queen. uh with that, it's Malchus's turn. So, he really wants to kill Rally. <laughs> However, he? he also just got absolutely ganked by the <laughs> team rogue. Yep. <laughs> so, 
He's gonna do a few things. Oh. Number oh, one. No. I'm gonna need the rogue to make a fortitude save. Oh god. I, I'm sorry, what? A fortitude save. Roll d20, um, add your total fortitude bonus. <laughs> you want me to do one? No, I don't like this. I reject. Yeah, this. as a rogue, you shouldn't. <laughs> Fee, roll me a fortitude save right now. Where is fortitude? Oh, there it is. Okay, I add. Okay, I add the number right to mm -hmm. the d d20. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why are you doing this to me, PJ? I'm what have I ever done to? Oh, never mind. Um, that was in nineteen. Uh, thirty-one. Thirty-one. Twelve. <laughs> Twelve plus nineteen, right? Yeah, yeah. Plus nineteen, thirty-one. Okay. How'd you okay. get Holy crap! Okay. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. I'm not cheating. I will take screenshots if I have to. No. I trust you. No. I don't. As <gasps> as you stab, Wasn't me. as you stab the lich, the lich puts one finger up to rally. Rally. You see the lich, Lord Malchus Dorans, are be like, just wait one moment. Slowly turns to you looks at you and goes, mm. you kind of smell like a baka. Mm. That's Errant awesome. Jaeger. And he touches you on the forehead. You were one point shy of succeeding. You are paralyzed for your next entire liberating turn. Step. Oh. Give me that sweetness. What does liberating step do? Liberating oh. step. Damn. Because I am a freedom champion. Yep. Where is it? Where is it? Did I? Oh, don't me with a 31? It was a 32 to succeed. Holy mother of Michael, God. PJ, and I are using all the at the table knowledge. Like, wait, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. We're like, we're trying to balance the entire team, trying to figure out everyone's bonuses. <laughs> wait, no. Uh, Archives is down, and I fucking closed it. Or oh, I, I, no. I closed it like it, like a dummy, like a fool. This is Hold all on. just, this entire episode is really just proof of how important Archives of Nethys is for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and and for the person that, that maintains that website all by their lonesome, you are doing you. incredible work. Yeah. 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 Archives of Nethys, shot. you mispronounced Woodward's character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, AON Cow, if you're still in the chat, uh, we know that things are down because like some licensing things got moved around, but God bless you for all the work that you do and everyone else at Archives of Nethys. Uh, liberating Step. Um, um, you, you, yeah, Liberators, uh, Champions Reaction. Uh, wait, what? Yes, <laughs> the ally can attempt to break free of effects, grabbing, restraining, immobilizing, or paralyzing them. They either attempt a new save against one such effect that allows a save, or attempt to escape from one of the effects of reaction. Makai, if you wish to give up your reaction to activate Liberating Step, yes. Fee, you can re-roll your save without using a hero point to save against this paralyzation. Uh, dude, I don't even know if I can. <laughs> Why not try? You could try. You said the same thing about your second sneak attack. Yeah. We one way to find out. It's a reaction. Yeah. He can do it every round. He can? Um, no, it, it's, a, it's a 17. 17, okay. Oh, so you try to rally her as a rally point that you are, but unfortunately she is still a smelly baka and she is frozen in her paralysis for one round. One that being round. said, with the other actions that the Lich has, he is going to turn back to you, Rally, and go, now, where were we? Oh, yes. I was going to kill you like the rest of your crew. You're going to try. Uh, ooh, yeah, that's a good one. Let's use that one. Um, I'm going to need you. Actually, do I have to make a roll on this? Because the site's down, so even I don't know how the spell works. <laughs> <laughs> you fallen into Woodward's trap. <laughs> Thank you, Archives of Nethys. <laughs> right. <laughs> hard. Right. Now you don't even know how to use Wild Shape. <laughs> <laughs> Man, ain't no one know how to use Wild Shape. Shut Why up. do you think I say bear? 
<laughs> Every time. I thought it was eight. Yeah, I did that last time because, you know, the archives was up. <laughs> okay, okay. It's a roll to... I built, I'm going to... I'm gonna have to just whiff it and say it's a roll to hit. So here we go. He's rolling to hit you. Get him. I mean, no, don't get him. Wait, no. Oh. <laughs> okay. So his bonuses. Ooh, ooh. Okay. All right. What's your AC rally? I know what he hit. I. I know your AC. <laughs> I was one more than that. Sorry, dog. <laughs> I need uh, to know your AC to make sure. Twenty-seven. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so the dive face was a 17. Mm. Yeah, the bonus is going to be enough that as a dirty crit, I now have to Dang. open up my dice roller because this is going to be a lot of d6s. He's about to drop on your D6s. asses. How are you how That's many fun. damage dice you get to roll? How do you, how do you determine that? Um, so uh, really fast, <laughs> Rally. As he turns to you, wounded as he is, he looks to you and he says, I want to slowly watch your life peel from your flesh. I want you to see the spirits of your lost crew as they wave at you from the watery grave some other undead left them in. Uh. And to do that, I'm going to need your blood. You take 71 negative Ooh. damage. And uh. with that, you see his hands reach out. Your blood breaks from your skin like water out of a popped water balloon as he collects it with his fingertips. And he gains half of that as temp HP. Mm. I hate this guy. Mm, this was, wait, no. Ugh, gross. Mm. Uh, next up is Sydney. I'll be right back. Sydney, prepare. You're gonna beat this guy's ass. I'll be right back. I'm still up. You got this. No, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. All right. Part of the reason I want to ask how you determine how many D like whatever that you roll is because I feel like I'm way underpowered for this like boss fight. Well, underpowered. Said throw Pippo again. It worked last time. (laughs) We could try that. When all else fails, yeah, throw the goblin. Um, well, here's the thing: if I'm if I am flanking him, I can use this my ring of swarming stabs. Um, so I can use a swift action to deal an additional one d six points of damage on a successful melee attack. So I can do basically. So, fun fact: I get double slice. Um, so I can attack with both of my weapons once, um, and then I can do it again. Yep. So I'm just going to go. <sighs> yeah. Um, Give him the blender. Yeah. If you yeah. have a third action, um, I'm always playing on my action to essentially mug the lich of his phylactery. <laughs> mug. So if you want to throw Pippo with your last action. Hey. PJ, I think we have yeah. a pretty good plan here. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Gold. So, at this point in time, I do believe that with everybody spread out as they are, No Beard is flanking. No Beard is flanking this dude right here that is being an undead jerk. Yeah? Um, right yeah. now he's already flanked. Uh, if you want to flank as well, you'd probably. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you flanking for join the fight sure okay um because i have this handy dandy thing called uh ring of swarming stabs um so i can when flanking an opponent can use a swift action to deal an additional 1d6 points of damage on a successful melee attack i also have um double slice which means i can lash out with both of my weapons um and i have a exquisite sorn cane so I basically take out my sword from its sheath. I wield the sword and the sheath, and I just go, I just go and I just get this guy. And I can do that twice. All right. <laughs> All right. So the first roll to hit will be, of course, without penalties. Uh, is the weapon a finesse weapon? I'm yes. pretty sure it is. It yeah. Is. So the second one will be without, uh, with only a minus four penalty. Yes. Okay. So. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Oh, I'm good. I'm sorry. I forgot that I was a fighter for a second. I was. Um, that's a stupid. That's a stupid modifier to hit. That is so dumb. Um. <laughs> um. That's a forty. There it is. Oh. Yeah. I mean, Fighters. So that's a crit. Uh, that's a dirty <clears throat> crit. Uh, let's get that second hit in there really fast. Cool. 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 Uh, reminder that this is for both of those weapons. Um, so the, and then the second time, uh, that is a, oh God, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, this feels so nice. I never do this as a, that's like a, that's a 40, that's a 41. Is that with so, the minus four or is that before the, the minus four? Oh, sorry. Minus four is 37. <laughs> That is still a dirty crit. You just dirty critted this guy twice, and that was a 1d6 on bonus on both of these strikes. So you get to double the weapon and double the sneak attack, effectively, on this guy, and double the modifier that's added damage to this bad boy. That's a lot of numbers. I'm gonna. Oh. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, that's a that's lot very of sexy of you, Sydney. Oh, thanks. All right, so. Excuse me, I have to do a lot of math really fast. Okay, so <laughs> the exquisite sword cane is a d6, but the sheath is only a d4, unfortunately. Um, so we got to do some math. So I got to double. Okay. Are you attacking with the uh, sword both times? Or are you attacking with the sword and the sheath? Uh, so like the first deck would be the sword, so it would be the sheath. Um, so the double slice is I lash out with both weapons. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that is sword sheath so at the same time so one six plus one more d6 of damage plus three times two is 12 damage i don't do a lot of damage guys i'm sorry oh so you're doing great this what's is, your what's your strength modifier uh, oh, plus my strength modifier. Uh, that's 16 damage. Okay. And did you double that strength modifier? No. That's 20 damage. And what's your expertise? Are you an expert? A master? You should I'm be a master. master. Okay. So that's three, m three more damage, which is also doubled. 26 damage. There it okay. is. So is that 26 total for that first strike? For the first one. Okay. 26 damage for the first strike. You see, even though he starts to look a little healthier from draining some of Riley's life, you've kind of beaten the facade of healthiness off his face. Uh, what's the second one uh, do? Holy heck. Okay. Double the weapon, which if the weapon is a magical weapon with a striking rune, that would be double... 2d6 for the sword and double i want to say 2d4 for the sheath as well oh son of a beech nut that's a lot <laughs> yeah. okay um, I'll, I'll double the is. number you just did i'll double half of that so i'll make it okay the temp hp is entirely gone so what's this Yay. new one um so if i'm doing my math right which i might not be okay um <laughs> that is that's 30 damage okay on the second one okay um Yes, because yeah, and then the ring of swarming stabs. I've I've used that. I've used it already, so I can't use a ring of swarming stabs anymore. I've used it twice. All right, yay! You're not underpowered. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, you're good. You're good. You're, you're Listen, good. this is also coming from the home game that PJ and I played last night, where I play a level eight barbarian who just did forty-one damage on one strike in one round. So that's why I feel that way. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's also very fair. Barbarians yeah. are their own very special yeah. class. <laughs> you you have just done, give or take some points, about sixty-five to sixty-seven damage. So don't feel bad at all about your your performance here. Yeah. Uh, Can I use my last action to throw Pippo? Uh, eh, Pippo, would you like to be thrown? Yeah, sure. Why not? It worked yeah. so well last time. Yeah. Throw, throw, throw the monkey goblin. Go right ahead. Give me an athletic check to throw him. I will. Oh, he gets thrown so hard. 
Oh, he gets thrown so hard. I love this game. Those cartoons where the velocity makes the person's mouth they go kind of flap and everything. Meme Chi Chi, I choose you. So, so you see like some weird damage happening to Rally, and like it's not happening for No Beard, and and she's just like absolutely not. And so she like unsheathes her weapon and she goes and she just like one, two, one, two. And then she picks up Pippo and she just yeets him right in his face with 34 athletics. Mm. And if she's close enough to hit him with her swords, she's just shoving Pippo in his face, man. Uh, <laughs> she just face pie faces Pippo. with pa Pippo. Oh, holding a pie. Yeah. <laughs> Pippo's holding a pie. Please. All right. Uh, I I think I think you moved and double striked. Oh no, but that's part of the movement. Okay. Yeah. No. Totally. So Pippo, you just kind of get picked up by your scruff like a cat who's like this might as well happen. And as as no beard just starts opening up a hurt clinic on this guy with what's left of their action, they stick the scabbard in the ground. It sticks. They grab you by the scruff of your neck and they throw you. You you land on the chest of this lich like Chow Tzu. Dragon Ball Z early era, like it, you, like you are, what a game. reference. <laughs> you are 30 seconds away from making a three eyed man cry. That's how close you are to this guy's chesticles. Uh, that being said, and uh, that is the end of that round. But before we end the round, Paddle, you withheld your action for when the Lich attacked Rally. There. That already happened. Paddle, what do you want to do before we end this round? Uh, I am definitely going to jump forward with my Blazing Talon Surge. Okay. Uh, so I get to stride once to meet up with a enemy. Clearly they are striking uh, Rally, therefore I can hit them. Uh, let's see if this works out in my favor. Okay. Um, 33 to hit. Plus I will hit. Circumstance. Oh, thank you. oh. Well, no, the circumstance bonus doesn't count to hit. He didn't want that on his hands. Aww. Yeah. Uh, but the 33 to hit, I will then roll the... So first off, we'll start with the D4. They take four points of persistent fire damage. Oof, okay. Uh, paddles hands as they leap forward. You see over these uh, webbed fingers form talons as a claw into this lich and the fire starts to burn on burn their skin of whatever mortal they have left and then follows my strike which is four eight, ten. uh that's 10 damage and since i struck i get to immediately move into a grapple action due to my uh <laughs> my uh fire talent surge and my grapple action with an athletics is a uh beautiful 28. i guess it's fortitude ac 28. yes that succeeds you now clinch the lich <clears throat> great and so if they are in a grapple with me they then activate my poison hide <laughs> Mm -hmm. Because they're grappling a poison hide griply. Uh, how much damage is that? I'm counting right now. Uh, eight persistent damage on the poison as long as we are grappled with the 1d4 fire damage as long as we are touching. Yeah, right now at the end of his next turn, he will take 12 damage from that. Yeah. Great. Uh, uh, I'm going to activate Flurry of Blows and hit him oh, again. <laughs> Yes! Let's go. I, I, I have to. It's the only time I get to be a monk. It's the final fight. Delete. Give me, give me those Ooh. hits on this bee snitch. Last hero point, my friends. Ooh, maybe not. Uh, twenty-four to hit. That will miss. Ah, okay. So Pippo or Pippo, uh, Paddle. I've done this before. <laughs> um, Paddle ends up gr uh, grappling this lich and goes in for a second strike, but the, like, torn back and forth in between the power of this lich and uh, Paddle trying to get a grip on them ends up going for the clench instead, and uh, the poison seeps a little farther out of Paddle's skin. 
A A E N. I'm just envisioning since we're both small characters, you're grabbing his like leg. I'm oh right, ass. yeah. <laughs> like, like two kids on adults. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it's uh, it's a full nightmare for a kindergarten cop here. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not a humor. All right. Next up, we are. Well, that was the first round of combat, y'all. Uh, so next up is uh top of the next round michael you're currently on the chest of the lich what are you gonna do first action i was wondering if i could uh heal the phylactery uh you can attack the lich with the phylacteries on yes yeah i, well, I was wondering i want to actually grab like take the phylactery from them mm -hmm. um i guess a thievery unless you're gonna let me roll clown lore but Probably I, I wish I could make sense of clown lore with this, but uh, if you wanted to actually steal off of his body, yeah. you can. Uh, you 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 know enough from knowing about the Forever Jester that you will still have to kill the body yeah. after you kill the Flactory. Yeah, yeah. I just okay, want to order. order. Cool, cool. Get, get this done first, if anything. Yes. Point of order. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ready. <gasps> oh. Is that a critical 20? Wait, Michael. Michael, connect. Michael, before you... Before... <laughs> Before we apply that, uh -huh. can, I, can I just say that if you're a clown, you're used to doing performing very up close to people, a lot of misdirection, yeah. and there's not a <laughs> So that does sound like clown lore to me. That do yeah. sound like clown lore to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's go with that. Let's go we'll walk that. around. I got I, there 20. I got a 20. I got a 20. You, sure enough, you are clenching this guy. You grab, you're like, <laughs> you grab the necklace, pop it right off his neck. It's in your hands. You have stolen the flag tree right from the lich's neck. You have two actions left. What are you going to do? All right. Last action, it's because it takes two actions to do. I'm using my firebrand ability called Daring Act. Um, you attempt a death defying maneuver to distract your enemy. Select one foe within range of the lich and attempt a acrobatics or athletic check against your target's reflex DC. And if I succeed, I can stride up to half my speed or up to my full speed if you quickly succeed without triggering actions from the target due to my movement and the target is flat-footed against the next melee attack you attempt against it before the end of your turn. Okay, so that is a melee attack, so you won't be able to get this benefit with your guns. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're gonna grab this and you're just gonna skedaddle, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm GTF Boeing, um, just so making a hundred percent sure I don't get hit. Sure. So you grab it and and just like, just like that guy who's like, hey, do you want to see my monkey do a trick? Give him five dollars. You grab it and you just run away. <laughs> I was wondering, can, can I actually do? I was gonna flavor it with Pippo does basically Guile's flash kick. Of Street Fighter 2. So and does that flip and then yeah. UFO? Yeah. Um, I mean, sure, it's not no damage, but you 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 yeah. flip off his yeah. chest like Raul, like Raul Juliet and, and Jean-Claude Van Damme, and you get away uh -huh. without any actions. You have one action left. No, no, that, that takes two actions, but uh, okay, um, okay. I do have that whip out, and that whip is a dancing weapon, so I would have that whip trip uh the lich who is now considered flat-footed he is considered flat-footed he is also constantly floating mm. he, can it still like wrap around him and just slam him down then like could that count as a trip well let's see if it hits first it's gonna be out of minus actually no you haven't done any technical attacks yet so i should be at a full hit let's see if it hits first and also, this would be uh, it, the trip will be a plus seventeen. Uh, roll, roll to hit, and we'll go from there. Roll to hit with the trip. That's really nice. <laughs> Let's see. That is a. Let's see. Thirty-six. Holy mother of Jesus. <laughs> So as you leave, your whip grabs him by his legs and pulls him. He kind of like, even though he's horizontal, like uh, uh, hovering vertically, he suddenly goes, Oof. and he's just kind of hovering horizontally in the air. And he's just like, I hate monkey goblins. 
Pitbull's Cheeky gonna, little bastards. Pitbull's gonna just do, which I guess only Pat will understand. Dog pile. Absolutely. Uh, next up, Makai. All right. Makai, you have your boasters challenge, and you have your smite evil. He is flat-footed. He is prone. I want you to roll to hit. With a plus two, they will be at a minus two for their AC. So go ahead and have fun beating the ass out of this guy if you want to. Hey, this is all buggy. <laughs> What's that? Do you want to know something fun, PJ? Always. So for my, so when I was filling out my character sheet, I had my, for my weapon mod, I had it at two because that's what it originally was before you like let me you know fix it uh it was supposed to be a five <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you for correcting Oops. that Up so that instead of a plus 17 it's supposed to be a plus 19. hit right yes to hit uh oh, and that's oh. a 19 plus 19. <laughs> oh that's a that's a 38. Oh, he's flat-footed that's a dirty crit Yes. No. Send it home. So here's what you're gonna do, my dude. Your your spirit does a two d ten, right? That's yes. a four d ten. You're gonna double your strength modifier. You're gonna double your boaster's mod uh, boaster modifier, and you're gonna double your smite. That's a lot of math. A lot of math. All right. So I get a it plus two for smite. Money. A plus two for what else? So you get a plus four for smite. Uh, that's, that's a right. total of a plus eight. You're going to get plus two for your boaster's challenge, which is now a plus four. So that's 12. You're going to get a plus... F How much is your strength again? Um, so plus 22 because my strength is five. Okay, so that's plus 22. And greater uh, weapon specialization. So that is another plus four. So that's 22 plus four. That's 26. 26 plus whatever the 4d10 is. Yay. I like Have this fun. game. Kawa, and dare I say, Bunga. <laughs> All right, so that's 10, 18. Oh, I flipped you over. That was a seven. Uh, and two sevens. So uh, we just took the, the Lich's lunch money, right, guys? <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, he still got I HP. Don't know, I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, but no lunch money. He down pretty hard. <laughs> uh, he's going to take 58 damage. Uh, four of which is good damage. So I don't know if that does anything. Ah, uh, oof, that's going to hurt so bad. But our morale is so good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! Okay, my <laughs> dude, so uh, he is not at all looking good. Uh, you have two actions left, right? What do you want to do with the other two actions? Um, I'm going to hit him again, for one. Right. This is, so we have minus going... five, because I kind of need you all to miss a few times. <laughs> nah. <laughs> not good. <laughs> all right, so only a plus, uh, only a plus fourteen. Gotcha. Right, <laughs> only a plus fourteen. All right, that's a seventeen plus fourteen. <laughs> Sorry, Peach. Thirty-one. There it is, Woo. right there. And... It's it's not a crit, but it for sure hits. That's that's the truth. Like the that video game bully. <laughs> yeah, I love that game. Uh, 31 damage, yay, or 31 to hit, yay. Uh, Michael, what is clown lore for lich lullabies? Oh! <laughs> um, I, I would give the finger gesture, but we have to, like, you know, censor it. Right. <laughs> uh, this, this. I found it. <laughs> oh Deep God. in the archives, I found this. <laughs> right. Pretty fucking great. It's pretty pog. Pretty pog. Pretty pog. Pretty pog champ. What you got for me? 2d10 plus 5 plus 2 plus 4. Should be plus 13 because it's it was plus 26 for the double. So that's math, right? 9, 9 and 2. It'd be, it'd be plus 11. 
Oh, no, you're right. 13. It'd be plus 13. So 2d10 plus 13. <sighs> All right. Well, I roll max damage on the 2d10. So that's 33 <laughs> damage. 33 damage? 33 damage. Pick him up. Pick him in. Let me begin. I came to win it. And that's all I can sing of that song. That's fair. That's <laughs> After six seconds, we have to owe royalties. Uh, <laughs> Rally, tell me the tale of how you kill Lord Malchus Dorinzar and remove his ever living spirit from this ever loving world. You, or, um, so, Rally is just going to walk up to this floating corpse, uh, still smoldering from the fire and ashes of whatever attack he just put on Rally. So, you want to talk about me mates? All right, how about you meet him? Uh, and he just kind of tears off his chest plate and reveals this massive chest piece tattoo. It is a shield with an ax and a sword on either side and three stars, um, three stars going across. And he points to each weapon uh, for Trinity and he stabs him right through the middle for Vani, and for Sidewender, and Flank. Uh, and he puts a hand on Lord Malchus Dorinzar's cheek, uh, and he's going to just imbue him with a healing touch, a lay on hands, and just pump him full of that sweet, delicious healing magic. Because and he lastly, is dead. Oh, I'm sorry, continue. Rally, uh, and lastly, he just says, and lastly, from me. You stab him. You say the name of your comrade. You stab him again. You declare the fallen warrior. You stab him again. The watery grave of the sailor is not forgotten. You stab him until every name is written into his decrepit corpse. And as you see bones break and shatter, as you see skin flay and, and sloth into ash, as the only thing left is his skull with his green eyes, you place your gentle hands like a warrior poet strong in grip but supple in wrist you place your hand upon him and you say and this one is for me and you see this holy fire ignite from your fingertips it starts to stretch across his face as he screams his horrific pain the pain of an undead soul being unmade being taken in reverse almost like like some horrible uh, technological dial up being broken down and it as you annihilate his face from right to left and his very soul is forced to flee his body as nothing is left but ash with your lay on hands being that he is undead he must recoil from your holy touch as a soul starts to fly up you see a little monkey goblin take a gun put it to the phylactery it's sideways it's a kill shot of the course. quick pull of his finger, <laughs> the phylactery shatters like a baseball glass through a neighborhood window. It breaks with the mm. empty promise of immortality with it. The soul tries to fly the phylactery, stops when there's nothing left for it to go home to. The soul of Lord, Mar uh, Lord Malchus Dorinzar looks around at a world that no longer he can call home. His soul breaks apart like a jigsaw puzzle slowly removing its pieces until the green flame of his soul is scattered to the forever death as the psychopomps take him. They take him piece by piece. They take him like a Thanksgiving feast ripped apart by hungry people. And meanwhile, somewhere deep in the river Styx, there's a jester with empty eyes and jingle bells who laughs and claps his hands as another immortal undead does not get to perform this day. God bless you, Jester. Oh, beautiful. God, I love this game. Can we do another week? <laughs> right, right. Okay. You made Pippo sound so eloquent. Do you want to know what I was going to say? <laughs> right. My choice? You wipe your ass with it? What, <laughs> what was going to be gonna your say, way? You just see Pippo in the corner jumping up and down on it like Rick James. F your <laughs> couch! F your couch! F your factory! I'm glad we went my method. Yeah. So that being said, 
As you have sent the undead soul back to its permanent death, you see the three artifacts of Assyrian in front of you. The blood red moon, like a swollen eye from a bar fight, starts to heal and the blood almost trickles out of the moon, lost into the night sky as the full moon stands triumphantly in a starry night over a city of masks, death, and sin. You collect the three artifacts the body of Lord Malchus Darnzar is lost to the night. The betrayer, Captain Cruz Balix, ash in the wind. In the night, you run back to your boat with your full crew of 10, the Queen of Blades, Rory, Mateus, Tanel, and Marion, all of you. You steal the albatross toss away from Captain Cruz Balix and out into the free sea. For you may take my life you may take my land, but in the water is my final stand. You cannot take the blue from me. The free people, the firebrands, are successful. Let's go! Huzzah! Really yeah. fast, before we call it a night, uh, Joe, could you please play Sea Life for me on repeat? Because we're going to do a little bit of uh, an epilogue, if you will. <gasps> Once you hear the fun, upbeat music, I want to hear... I want to hear your victory tale as you bring the artifacts back to Assyrian and they pay you heaps of gold they give you free land to live in and they give you whenever you want to a free trip to the arc the uh, necropolis to take artifacts that are legally acceptable and culturally acceptable to steal and take and sell each and every one of you is given your sunny horizon your tomorrow and your tomorrow into your in your tomorrow I want to know what each and every single one of you does now that you have successfully rid the world of a lich and given Assyrians prized artifacts back. Starting with the VIP, Rally, what do you do with your happily ever after? Uh, Rally starts, I believe with all of the, um, I believe with all of the resources he's been given, he pretty much does what he does with all of his winnings and earnings, and that is, send it back to his old liberated war camp and they use it to fix up the town um like he sends all of it like this man truly keeps enough for to repair his armor maybe get a couple of meals along the way and all of the excess just goes back to the island yeah. um and yeah so he has it all fixed up like he's if, what they do with it is completely up to them but he visits every now and then he knows that it's being put to good use um especially the rally point orphanage uh, which may or may not have been his old war camp prison. Um, but more specifically, I believe that <laughs> Rally's tale probably doesn't end, uh, probably doesn't end too well. I imagine he does the whole like adventuring thing for a couple of years as far as he can, but eventually that whole Kekig, <laughs> a champion of Kekig, probably hunts him down and they have an epic final clash on some snowy mountaintop and one of them walks away. Okay. Well, let me say this. You get a letter from the the fortress, they, the the island that says now they are at a, a completely uh, defensible fortress. As they they ask you to come in for a celebration, as you do come back, the people that greet you are not the warriors of the island, but the children that look up to you as a hero, as a dad, as a brother, as a legend, as a symbol of freedom. You are only you're not worshipped, but you are revered as an example. And when you leave after a day, a week, a month of partying, you feel that in the world you have given people hope. Children hope, rebels hope, that the fire still burns bright. Now, maybe on some snow-capped mountaintop, a red mantis assassin comes sneaking out of the night in the name of the mantis god of assassins, they kill you. But that's a story for another time. Tonight, you are the hero of the fire of freedom and the rally point holds out. Ian. Uh, great game. 11 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, what does Paddle do? What is their happily ever after so far? So, I think Paddle, honestly, uh, kind of collects their belongings. They've only ever known the sea and the ship, and they see the albatross toss as another way out. Another way to distant lands, things they haven't seen, maybe a land without people who lie about their names wearing masks. Um, but another place entirely. Um, 
I think Paddle takes to the sea for more adventure and at some point or another, hopefully to grab and and take and maybe gather more treasure to bring back to their Gripply home if possible. Um, but for the rest of their life, they are on the sea for without a paddle, where would a ship be? So as a as a ship needs a paddle to move, so too does a paddle need a boat to live. And as you head out on the sea in search of adventure, bringing heroic gotten gains back to your people, you one day get a map, a map made of dragon hide, written in angel blood, and with a big finger from a friend from a land far forgotten, and a big smile, you hear, but there's one last adventure yet, my friend. Wishes are made of this gold. And that is an adventure for another day. Beautiful. So what does No Beard do? I think we know, but I want to hear the tale of what No Beard does. Okay. You do know the tale. No Beard goes back to her lovely wife, Golgotha, the amazing half-orc merfolk lady. And she brings her a gigantic chest of gold to help her with her shop because she sells things in her shop. Nice little trinkets. And we have a cottage and we live a very quiet, happy life together forever. Um, and uh, uh, No Beard goes on adventures every once in a while, hopefully with, uh, with some of her friends that she's made on this journey in particular. Um, she does... Uh, keep one treasure chest to herself and distributes the rest of the gold evenly between the rest of them. But um, every once in a while, she likes to bring something very nice home to her wife, like like a pearl ring or a beautiful comb or like something nice or maybe like a trinket that was like maybe from a lich king that she might have swiped from Pippo and was like, this is still pretty, you might like it. Um, you know, she's very sentimental like that. But you just have big, strong lady with big, strong other lady, and they live happily ever after. And that's my dream. Hello. This As you is sit in a very relaxing chair, yeah. and in your hands, the fingers and the hand intertwine with yours of your love, whose arm is sitting in the body that is now placed in a very relaxing chair next to yours, you feel this utter contenting sigh just wash over your body as she looks at you with a smile of pure peace. And you turn together on the cliff face of your home overlooking the horizon of a golden red sun. The silver of age has taken to your hair just a bit and the wrinkles of life and joy have taken to the crow's feet to your eyes. You feel a marriage long lasting in this moment all at once and then you hear a delightful friend's voice and a hand wave as another man of freedom and some friends of freedom look to you and ask for one more adventure but that's a story for another time golden girls adventure hey come on out you bag <laughs> one more time <laughs> Let's move into the abyss. Are you afraid to get wet? Afraid uh, to get <laughs> wet. <laughs> uh, Fee, I I'm really curious. Jack Jaeger, Jagger, Jaeger, now like a million gold richer in the world, uh, having survived a lich and Vire and has connections in Osirion. What the hell does Jaeger do? What's their happily ever after? Um... Well, they technically still have their quest from from their homeland that they need to fulfill as being the chosen one. Um, but I believe that Jaeger actually kind of goes to experience life because they haven't, because they have been the chosen one from like very like from birth and have been groomed to be a warrior and a rogue and a thief and all of that to protect their um, little home village that they were born in. I think they will take that money and kind of do their version of living 
um, which hopefully means uh, escorting Paddle on some trips and seeing No Beard and going on small little adventures together. But I think mostly they will probably, I say they, I mean, she will probably settle down somewhere, maybe like a, a, a busy, busy little city and open up a candy store <laughs> and actually teach people how to make chocolates and use her little thievering and stealth tricks to amuse little children and tell them the great tale of how once upon a time she defeated a lich together with her brave friends and how obviously it kind of was all up to her <laughs> with a little wink and a nudge. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I think eventually once she has experience all the joy that she can from that which probably won't take all too long because she gets bored fairly easily she will try and return to her chosen one journey but i think for now that's probably what she'll do okay you are living the peaceful <laughs> life in this candy shop and many 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 books have been written about the adventures of the of the firebrand that stole the fire of life from the greed of undeath and then one day, as you're just kind of enjoying your time in the shop, quiet day, two different sets of footprints enter the shop, the bell rings and you look up and you see a fletchling, a being of handsome, un otherworldly beauty with those fletchling eyes. And next to them, this glowing beacon of a person who pulls back their hood and their cloak. And you see this scar tissue a mile wide in their chest. And they look at you and they say, it, the time has come. The prophecy has called you. But that's a story from the another time. day. Now, last but not least, <laughs> Pippo the Magnificent. What is Pippo's happily ever after? Actually, I have a question for you first, PJ. Ooh, okay. What is the most awful place in Galerion? <laughs> Well, it depends on who you are, but if you want one of the worst places I can think of, Cheliax kind of sucks. Yeah. All right. Okay. One of the few things right. I do know about Pathfinder. All right. I got one. I got one. After this uh, adventure, one day Pipple was there, and then the next day they weren't. They were simply gone. Not a to be found <laughs> but uh we'll say sometime uh somewhere down the line every so often their friends would uh maybe stumble upon a little green business card that might you know just slowly you know float and down and just land at their feet kind of like that uh feather in uh the ending of forest gump uh one day, in the land of Chiliax, the word, the name Pippo, suddenly just starts to, you know, sprout up. And every so often, it may be a dark alleyway or, you know, in an st empty street somewhere, you see a uh, person just standing there, dressed like a clown. And then one, and uh, every so often, you hear gun, a gunshot in a dark, dark alleyway. You hear a laugh, and then no. First, you hear a laugh, and then the gunshot, and then you hit them somewhere now? in the let's say, uh, the hells where uh, the it, forever Jester is. Just. You just see him there sitting and he just has a little smile there smile on his face because he knows what pippo is doing he knows what uh pippo has planned so one day as pippo uh is retrieving his pistols from the chest of a hell knight that he has just led down an alley and with the double barrel cacophony goodbye sent the hell knight to whatever their horrible good reward is you hear a little clap 
that then grows into a fast, raucous applause of thousands and thousands of fans. And as you turn, you're greeted by the skull of an empty face, a jester's cap, and three jingle bells. As the skeleton goes, <laughs> Hello there, little buddy. Well, guess what? Your time under the spotlight? It's just getting brighter. I have a special, special task for you. <laughs> and that is a story for another time. For never. For never. No, no we don't never. want it. Did, don't okay, want it. in a weird way, did Pippo become Spawn? <laughs> Yeah. What, what, what weird portion of yeah. Pippo and Spawn <laughs> crossover happened? Yeah, why? This was an innocent clown man. McFarlane, where are you? <laughs> what happened? Explain this. I, my original idea was Pippo just gonna, was starting a flash mob in Chili Axe because for the lulls. A, a flash mob? That's not what you said. Anyway, a flash be mob in between gunshots in the alleyway. Yeah, I was gonna say a muzzle, a muzzle flash mob. Anyway, now. I hope one day we can raise anchor, drop sails, and have these firebrand heroes once more set out for the adventure of a lifetime. Will it be the one I promised tonight? Will it be a very different one? I can't say. But what I will say is that because of this story, this adventure, these heroes, death has been killed for another day. And hopefully with your donations, a child will know what that means personally to know that their death has been killed from the day and that the fire of life in them gets to burn forever thank you for donating all you can thank you for joining this adventure thank you for joining my friends these heroes these psycho clowns uh and thank you so much with that being said we're gonna say our goodbyes and our good night starting with the champ who's doing this at like 7 a.m. in Germany, Fee, please, Fee, tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Hi, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, this was an amazing experience. Uh, I am so happy that I got to be a part of it and meet so many amazing people. It was absolutely fantastic, and I hope I can see you guys again soon. Um, Good morning from Germany, and I suppose good night <laughs> for you guys. Um, you can find me on Twitter under Finnaman, which is P H I N A M I N. Oh my God, I can't spell anymore. Uh, the same for Instagram. Uh, and yeah, hit me up if you ever want to talk or if you want to geek out on different things like cosplay and uh, K pop and anime stuff. I'm here for it all, um, and otherwise, I'll be supporting the stream and seeing you all then, and probably in the chat, so, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, next up, uh, Ian, tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Hey, all. My name is Ian. When I am not here playing Paddle, I am playing Woodwort on our standard Edge of Legends game coming back in November. <laughs> Uh, October, TB, uh, to, TBA, to be announced. Jesus. Anyway, on the internet, you can find me at, Beard, at Bearded Scald on Twitter or our Discord. So come hang out with us on our Discord. Um, we have great conversations about world building, all sorts of things that are discussed on At The Table. The Edge of Legend world PJ is put together with Sydney's help, like everything else that has been put together. Uh, everyone else's worlds are brought in. Great discussion um, everywhere there. This weekend, though, uh, the small shop that I run with my fiance called Wish and Heathen is going to be having a big update. So please come check it out. Um, candles released for Samhain. So uh, please, if you'd like to see anything or uh, try anything out, we'll also be at a few craft fairs that I'll be introducing uh, later on this month. But until then until we either meet in person or across the interwebs. I will see you next time. All right. Next up, Mr. Michael Powell. Tell him who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Well, you can find me all over the internet on my social medias, which is usually at Mr. Kapow. That's M-R-K-A-P-A-O. Or my Facebook page, which is facebook.com 
slash Michael Pal does stuff because I do a lot of stuff like my uh, YouTube channel called Fantastic Tales of Adventure. Oh, and uh, also Thursdays, I am on the Toyzilla Network channel here on, oh, is that? Oh, here on Twitch uh, for Toys Alive, where we talk about collectibles and toy news. It's a lot of fun. Hope to see you there. And I actually have a list of stuff, actually, that's coming up. Um, let's see. Tomorrow after Toyzilla is going to be Purgatory Cafe, where I believe uh, uh, PJ here is going to be joining me on Life Action Roleplay at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then... On Friday, uh, on the channel called ja Jahana, I'm just gonna spell it J A H A N A N O N. Um, I'm going to be part of Assassin Zero for uh, for a game that uses the system Modern Age. It's going to be 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Central Standard Time. Then on October 9th. Uh, yeah, got a lot of stuff uh, here. Um, I'm going to be interviewing Cricket Lay, the voice of Mai from Avatar The Last Airbender at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going to be doing a little Funko Pop signing. If you want to get a Funko Pop, uh, just go over to www.toyzilla.com. And then, uh, yeah, and sometime in October, I'm going to be dropping a really new, fun, spooky horror surprise. So Ooh. check that out. Horror surprise. Uh, looking for speaking of horror surprise, Sydney, please tell us who you are and where can find you on Sweet Sweet Internet. Or I don't know, maybe in, in in the West Coast doing something spoopy. Oh, imagine that. The horror is me. Hello. Um, the horror is me. <laughs> my name is Sydney Rubino. You can find me all over the internet at Sydney Rubino. That is TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, I have a YouTube channel where I post uh stories of me reading which i haven't done i took a small hiatus because i've been very tired but it's because i've been doing a lot of things um story time with sid will be coming back in october i will be reading more grimm's fairy tales because october is the best best month spooky season is awesome we deserve some spooky stories along with that um but i am actually going to be gone next month from Nat 20 productions i will still be here in spirit i will still be involved in the discord and social media whenever I can, but I will be in the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. We had our opening weekend last weekend, um, and I will be playing the role of Miss Midnight. So if you want to see me be absolutely dreadful and um, so vain that it makes you sick, um, come visit me at the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride in Griffith Park. Um, I have a lot of fun playing a character that I love very dearly, and I will talk to you and take pictures of you and be wearing a lot of prosthetic makeup. So that is what I will be doing. And I appreciate you so much for being here. And I can't wait to see you again in November. All right, Makai, who are you? Where can we find you? That's Sweet Sweet Internet. Hi, I'm Makai, as you can tell. And if you can't, what have you been doing for the past three hours? Uh, but I'm Makai. I played Rally tonight and I had an amazing time. If you want to find me anywhere on the internet, uh, just don't, because I don't do anything. But if you're really so inclined, you can find me at wannabe VA. Uh, that's wannabe underscore VA. Wannabe is one word. But if you really want to do something important with your time, if you really want to do something important with your energy, support your local artists, support your local business, support your local small business. Because as much as I would love your support for me, they need it, especially in these times. So support them, lift each other up, and as always, be loved and be appreciated. Uh, so I guess this leaves me. I'll make it quick. My name is PJ McGaw. You can find me all over the internet at pj.mcgaw. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Come find me. Come friend me. Let's have fun. When I'm not here with these absolute legends on Wednesdays nights, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, you can find me and Michael here. Uh, 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. discussing uh, TTRPGs. We just did a deep dive into the playtest material, Thaumaturgist, and we're heading back into this gorgeous, glorious, powerful book called Secrets of Magic and some other surprises for at the month of October. Uh, that being said, you can also find me on Mondays for Tabletop Rolls, uh, 7 to 9 p.m. as we play the Strength of Thousands and 
coming in October on Thursdays uh, with a D&D campaign from the DNB and a few others. I'll tell you about that as it arrives. But this Thursday, tomorrow night, uh, I am strapping on my good boy wings as I play Barakiel, the Angel of Protection and Thunder, as we bring about the Holy Avengers Initiative. I wish I was kidding. I got the alert, and I am suiting up for action in Purgatory Cafe. Tomorrow night, live action role play, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so I'll see you there uh, for that. And uh, stay tuned. Uh, because in 2022, we have a fun announcement that we're going to be very excited to tell you. And starting next week, it's Halloween. Come and join a bunch of level zero human beings. Oh, I think we accidentally raided a little too soon. Yep, we sure done did. We oh, already raided. Oh, we did. We already <laughs> raided. I'm, I'm the worst. Well, that's okay. They only missed me. It doesn't matter. Um, Joe said we raided, but it'll still be on the record. So, okay. Yeah. Yay! Well, since we're on the record, I'll make this quick. Uh, yeah, God, of all the times to raid. Uh, so come tune in next week as everyone here plays, well, everyone from the Edge of Legend group plays a level zero human being surviving the crimson carnage of Inshelator. Can they survive the demons and devils? Hey, who knows? We'll see what happens for the month of Halloween. Uh, I thought I had to hit the okay button. But live and learn. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you here same that time, same that channel for Edge of Legends and the Crimson Carnage next week. Bye. Love you all. Bye. Bye.